the drama, the dust, the dynamics of the prologue of the 2023 APSA Cape Epic. Welcome to Hermanus for stage one of the 19th edition of the race that measures all. It is a very, very beautiful morning here in the Overberg as we uh, begin the journey, the week-long journey uh, proper in terms of the marathon stages today. A 98-kilometer challenge with 2,500 meters of uh, climbing and an out-and-back route that will bring them back to this uh, beautiful uh, town of Hermanus on uh, the Overberg coastline. It is a stunning morning, but a little breezy. We'll talk about all that, about all that and plenty more over the next few hours as you join us on Stage 1. And it's wonderful to welcome once again Annika Langfeld sitting alongside me. Last time the race was here in 2019, you won the stage with uh, Anna van der Breggen. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's an amazing uh, area for, uh, for riding and uh, we had quite a good day out there. You bet uh, a lot of good <laughs> days out there over your five uh, wins. And sitting alongside you, the man who uh, does the numbers, crunches them, analyzes them and uh, tells us all about the tech stuff as well as the racing, Neil Gardner. Thanks, Gerald. And I'm going to add to that stat is that uh, uh, Annika Langfall also won stage two in her minus in 2019. So well, I think we're going to be having a very close race. Uh, that particular edition was, uh, you couldn't really say it was very close. Uh, you were certainly dominant, uh, Annika. But uh, this year at the Absolute Cape Epic, it's very different. It is super close. We've seen from the prologue, the uh, first, second, and third were separated by a matter of seconds. And we have not yet seen a prologue that fast, both in the men's, uh, that close, uh, both in the men's and in the women's categories. So it's uh, going to be an exciting day today for sure. Absolutely. The prologue at uh, Mirandal uh, Hawaiian Estate did not disappoint in terms of intensity and excitement and the level of competition at the very highest uh, uh, level of this race with uh, a massive field of uh, elite uh, UCI men and, of course, a huge field of uh, riders in uh, across the board. In fact, the biggest field of all time. So this is the scene earlier this morning and uh, they headed off uh, early just after dawn on a blustery morning here in um, This is that huge field heading off uh, to uh, the start their journey, the 98 kilometer journey that will uh, bring them, take them uh, up towards uh, uh, up the Himalayanada Valley and back down basically on, on either side of the Himalayanada Valley and back down to uh, Hermanus. So the challenges are very different to uh, day uh, one on the uh, prologue today. The endurance will be tested. The new combinations will uh, get a real sense of what this is all about at the uh, Absa Cape Epic. Yeah, today, today is uh, very different to the prologue. Um, so yeah, it'll be exciting to watch how it unfolds. Right, let's reflect back on uh, the uh, prologue yesterday at Mirandal, and it was uh, some serious racing by all of them. Let's have a look at how they went. It was cloudy and cool initially at uh, Mirandal, but it did clear up and become uh, warm in almost perfect conditions for the riders. All uh, 738 teams got a chance to experience and uh, see the beautiful views of Table Mountain once those clouds had lifted. Mirandal hosting the prologue for the first time since 2017. The challenge was uh, tough, a 27 kilometer prologue with 750 meters of climbing using uh, much of the uh, Tigerberg mountain bike uh, club's network of uh, trails as they went up at Dorsberg, the first big challenge onto single track and then a blast down the Godzilla descent. The Fair Cape loop took them to the uh, Fair Cape bridge and then more climbing to the vineyards down to the Toyota tough second section at Hochekral. The final challenge was Stairway to Heaven and uh, then single track all the way into Mirandal. The defending champions, Georg Egger and Lukas Baum, were back once again. Nino Schurter, hungry for a third title. Diez Coloma, back here to present a challenge, the Spaniards. And Vincenzo Nibali, the star attraction from the road, making his Absa Cape Epic debut. Sofia Gomez Villa found back again as the defending champion, new partner in Katarina Nash from the Czech Republic. And uh, they would be uh, protecting that legacy of. Uh, 
the Songo Specialized 91 uh, team. Candace Lil carrying the South African hopes alongside Amy Wakefield, Lil, the South African champion, second last year. A new partnership for this, or reuniting after their 2018 uh, partnership. And uh, Vera Losa and uh, her partner Kim LeCourt also will be uh, serious challenges. As, uh, Candace Lil and Amy Wakefield went out. Wakefield on the front, and they set the early times going up the climbs. Great support from uh, the uh, locals at uh, Mirandal as they flew down the, the uh, trail. But some uh, misfortune for uh, Amy Wakefield. They lost time here. They were looking good for uh, really putting pressure on the uh, top of the podium, but uh, that'll fall cost them time. And uh, as a result, they slipped a little bit further down than they would have liked. Viera Lossa, the Namibian champion, together with Kim LeCourt, the Mauritian champion. This is a combination who uh, finished the uh, Spa Swiss Epic in third place and won the final stage and they are riding superbly together and they put it together yesterday to put themselves right in the mix in second place on the, the prologue yesterday for Kim LeCourt and Vera Losa. Sufficient to ensure infinity. And this is the uh, defending champion team specialized uh, team uh, specialized 91 and they are a formidable unit once again Sophia Gomez and uh, Katharina Nash making her Absa Cape Epic debut but she's a highly accomplished and very versatile uh, rider across all formats and she showed her skill and sh her appetite for the Absa Cape Epic here in no uncertain terms following uh, Sophia Gomez Verfans uh, wheel all the way and at times leading as they powered to victory here but by the narrowest of margins uh, very very tight indeed as they got to the finish to uh, take uh, the top step second place to Lossa and Kim LeCourt and uh, the uh, specialized Songo team at the top of the podium specialized 91 Songo Sofia Gomez Verfan and Katharina Nash the men's teams uh, headed off later on was midday for this uh, combination the race defending champions were last to leave the start hat and Gail Gega and Lucas Baum they came here last year with no real uh, clear plan except to go hard and uh, give it their absolute best which is what they did last year to win the title in sensational fashion they finished third last year in the prologue they did so again this year and Baum and Egger making uh, their presence felt very early on Nino Schurter with uh, Andri Frischnick this time as his partner after he uh, had a very trying uh, race last year, finishing in ninth uh, with the last Foster. This year with the new partner Andri Frischnick over the Fair Cape floating bridge. And uh, they were making it count. They were putting the pressure on. They went up uh, Stairway to Heaven well, but it was clear that Frischnick may have been starting to lose a bit of that strength towards the end of the prologue and uh, they would come home in second place. Well, Matt Beers has won uh, the last two prologues of the Absa Cape Epic 2021 and 22 and uh, the man riding alongside Chris Blevins for the second time as Toyota Specialized 91 were in supreme form. Absolutely sublime riding by this pair, the South African and the American hosting the fastest time of the day to take the race leaders yellow jerseys once again as they have done for the last couple of years. Ego and Baum though do not discount the Germans once again. They are very much in the mix. Uh, Krishnik and Schurter are taking the stage. The South African and American combination. Toyota Specialized 91. Chris Blevins and Matt Beers. So Dawn over Hermanus here and that's confirmation of how tight that was. 45 seconds between the top three teams and just uh, over two minutes between the top seven. And never before, I think, have we seen it as tight as this. The base and Miller wearing the uh, red jerseys of the Aps, uh, African leaders in the men's category. Ravensteiner and Allemann in fifth place. Uh, Sirvold, the German champion, and Stosek in the mix as well. Becking and Diaz and uh, superb ride by Samueli Poro and Vincenzo Nibali, the uh, three time, uh, the, the winner of all three Grand Tours and uh, a couple of monuments as well, making his Absa Cape Epic debut in the top 10. That is a 
big marker by that combination. And look at that, top 10, just 2 minutes and 45, which really sets up the uh, week superbly. Gomez Vierfan and Nash, just 7 seconds over Kim Lecourt and Vera Lossa, the efficient Infinity Insure combination. And uh, they will wear the uh, Apps, uh, African uh, women's jerseys, Wakefield and uh, Lil in the third place with uh, Steph Kiva and Krahulkova, followed by Tiffany Keep, uh, Haley Preen and uh, Sarah Hill and Elrika Harms in Pretorius. Eight minutes uh, there and thereabouts uh, covering the top six teams in the CM.com women's category. Intensely close racing all the way around the uh, prologue and uh, it does set up uh, this first marathon stage, 98 kilometers today. And uh, well, they say that uh, you don't necessarily win the race on the uh, prologue at Mirandal, but you could lose it. And none of those teams have uh, done that. They've uh, done superb jobs. This is how the route goes. Two days in a minus, then uh, transition to Oak Valley for that short, punchy uh, time trial in the middle of the race. The big stage from Oak Valley to Lawrenceford and uh, a tough one to finish with the grand finale to Val de Vie, all of 80 kilometers and 2,400 meters of climbing. Five stages over 2,000 meters of climbing, three stages over 100 kilometers, and that mid-stage time trial at 47 kilometers. It's got the, all the ingredients to provide a wonderful week of drama here at the Apsa Cape Epic. Today's stage from Hermanus High School heads around up Rotary Drive, a beautiful view over the bay, and then the drop down into the Himalanada trails as they head up uh, the left-hand side of the mountain. Babylon's touring, that's the one that the big peak there and they go deep onto the uh, slopes of that uh, mountain. The trails are wild and rough. This is when the riders will really get to find out what the Apsa Cape Epic is all about as they go up and over the uh, Hebel and Arda Mountains, cross the valley, and then come down the other end. Down is a euphemism because there is very little uh, down here. It is going to be seriously challenging for all the teams as they look to complete this uh, tough as ever day one as they finish the way they started down Rotary Drive and into the finish at Hermanus. 98 kilometers, 2,500 meters of climbing. It is always stage one in Neil and Annika, a very, very tough uh, day for all the, all the riders. Definitely today is going to be very different to yesterday. Um, and all the teams, uh, the top three uh, in the men's and the women's uh, races are super close. So it's, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see. Right, let's uh, now get to the uh, start. What a sight, isn't it, over uh, Walker Bay here in Hermanus as we uh, caught up with some of the uh, protagonists in the men's elite race. Amongst them, Alex Miller, Samuel Porter, Matt Beers, Hans Becking and uh, Fabian Ravensteiner. Let's see if we can uh, hear what they, their thoughts were ahead of uh, stage one. Yeah, if it, what, uh, what was the day like for you? Uh, it was a it was a controlled day for us. I think we um, we talked about it before, and then we said we must go guard too hard. Uh, because the climbs near the end of the stage, we still you know, we still have to have some punch in the legs with them. So I think we we gauged our efforts quite well. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously with today and the whole the whole of next uh, this week um, in mind, um, mm -hmm. I think we gauged well. And yeah. We, and then sixth, but today is when the race starts, isn't it? This is this is this is the, the big dance. No, for sure. This is uh, today is quite a quite a tough stage. 90, 80 kilometers, two and a half thousand meters of climbing. So um, I think positioning will be very important. And yeah, then of course looking after the equipment uh, as best as possible. Do you know these trails at all? Have you ridden here before? Um, I've done some of the Wines to Wales trails in the beginning, um, but I'll be relying a lot on Philip, Philip's um, experience from the past few years. Um, so yeah, it'll be important to be away from the trails. Vincenzo, welcome to uh, the uh, Epsa Cape Epic. How was your first day? Uh, with the wake up, is not the best because uh, uh, this morning the wake up is on the 4 and uh, 30 minutes, <laughs> so really bad. But now a little bit better and uh, okay. Today I have uh, the first stage, it's an important uh, day, 90k and uh, I follow my mate. <laughs> important to have a man who's, who's been around before, uh, to, to have uh, with you, he knows what's, what's happening here. But uh, I happen to uh, my mate have uh, many experience. Uh, he raised uh, Cape Epic 
six times. And uh, it's a nice, no? <laughs> so uh, for me, it's uh, the first experience, and uh, I need to learn more. What has he told you about uh, what to expect this week? What is he, what did he share with you? Uh, I, do, I, I don't know because uh, it's completely new for me. <laughs> okay. Tell us about the combination. Are you? Um, how's it, how's it going to go today on that long marathon stage for you? That's why no one's know anything. <laughs> I tried to tell him uh, what about, uh, firstly, the wake up <laughs> of today and was we'll struggling, but uh, yeah, about the race and about today is the first stage, it's nothing uh, compared to yesterday. So yesterday we see we have a good pace for joining the race, but today is completely different. We have to fight for the position uh, in the trails, in the, you know, in the single trails. Uh, we'll see, we'll see because uh, I'm sure that uh, he knows uh, how to move into the group. Uh, he is really smart in that, but uh, yeah, then we, we, we have to, to see how we work together because yesterday it's easier, we, we are alone. Today with the group, you have to, f to look at your partner, to see where he's him, uh, you know, maybe technicals, maybe some problems, so we'll see. Who's the boss when it comes to the mechanicals and technicals? Who's going to work uh, those ah, up? Vincenzo is a smart one. Uh, he's really nice in the technicals, so I think we can help th together, but uh, he don't need for sure. It's um, a three-peat of that, so that's pretty special. I uh, clearly have a knack for it, and I also have to kind of keep up with my cross-country partner every time. So, yeah, it's super special. Obviously, the margin is really close, so um, today is going to be a proper battle out there. And it's a hard stage, so yeah, we, we're going to do what we can, and the uh, worthy one is going to wear the jersey. Right in the second year with, with Chris, we've obviously we've got that year in, in, in not only the leg, but in, in the mind and the, the combination. I mean, how, how much of a difference is that going to make? Uh, in the yeah, it makes a huge difference. I've, I've had a different partner for like six years, so mm -hmm. this is the first time I'm coming back to the Epic with the same, like a bit of familiarity. And, uh, Chris is an amazing person and guy and uh, yeah we get on super well and it's just you don't have to learn a whole new personality and um, riding style so yeah it's, it's been interesting here. These trails uh, you probably know them fairly well. <laughs> Nothing in it at the front there. What's the <laughs> strategy plan? The plan is just to keep it, obviously keep it the front, it's a lot of single track and um, you don't want to be at the back, there's a lot of yo-yo, so I know this stage quite well from 2019, um, it's, it's a high stage and uh, it definitely gets quite decisive at the end, um, but yeah we're pretty much going to be marking each other I guess until, until that final prime and, and then hopefully we can all stay. Is the jersey a weight or a wing? A weighted wing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's heavy, but it, it obviously gives you like huge pride and um, confidence. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. What are your thoughts on today? Yeah, first dates, the long dates is always important for the overall. If you look back many years, it's very decisive for for the standings the rest of the week, and as always, we look forward to racing the trails and. Good fun. Do you know these trails at all? No, it's the first time. I did, it's my fifth Cape Epic, but I've never been to Herman. So. Looks very nice and looks good. Your combination has been racing together for a while. I mean, that's obviously works in Yeah, but working with Jose is amazing. It's the moment when I shift back, he's just shifting back. The moment when I want to go faster, he's picking up the pace. The moment um, he feels bad, I feel bad. It's like it's a bit scary sometimes, but it's really, really good racing. Today. It's a big bunch, very close up front there. Yeah, it will be exciting racing today, I think early on already. How are you feeling this morning after the prologue yesterday, Fabian? Yeah, the feeling is good. Uh, yesterday we had a good prologue, so we are confident for a good stage today. Tell us about your combination. It was a late uh, combination uh, riding with Vincenzo. No, I uh, Samuel riding with Vincenzo. I'm riding with uh, Wood and we are a couple. We just uh, won uh, last uh, two weeks ago the Andalusia bike race together. So. This is the fourth uh, stage race together and uh, now we know us well and we, we will try to do it well. You know this route well, you, well you've been before, you know what's in store, what, what are you expecting today? Yeah, for sure it's a, it's a hard stage with a lot of uh, um, single trails, uh, there are a lot of stones and also a little bit sandy, 
So the terrain is hard and uh, not super fast, so it will be a hard stage. So the thoughts of the uh, riders uh, ahead of today's stage, and this is the scene a little bit earlier today. We're going to be bringing you images from uh, the stage. It's uh, very, very breezy out there today, so uh, our images uh, from our helicopters might be intermittent. Uh, it's due to the very, very heavy winds that uh, are blustering around the Overberg region today, but uh, this is the start. But Science uh, have uh, two teams here, and uh, Keegan Bontekun and, and his partner Arne de Toy chasing that uh, red jersey of the APSA uh, African Jersey Leaders Base, and Miller will be wearing those as they blast it away from the start. The yellow jerseys prominent there, as were, of course, Orbea Leet Speed Company Racing. Gerald, I'm always surprised at uh, at the speed at which the riders kick off the uh, the day. This is a 98 kilometer day. And they are starting, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a cross-country start, but it's, it's it's pretty quickly. And we heard some whirring in the background when we were interviewing uh, Matt Beers. There was this sort of a whining, whirring noise. And that is the noise of the home trainers. The, uh, the home trainers are used for the riders to warm up before they start the stage. They know that it's very important that they have good, that they are in prime, that, that their bodies have been primed for the big efforts that to come. Of course, they have got rotary, they did have rotary, drive to climb in the early part, a very steep tar climb that you see right here. It's important to prime the bodies just so they're ready. So really, there's absolute optimization of the rider's performance because they know how much day one counts or stage one counts. Day one has passed. That was the prologue stage one we're on. It's a 98 kilometer stage with 2,550 meters of climbing. And uh, it starts really early on. The racing got really, got, got hot really in the, in the very beginning. Absolutely. That rotary uh, uh, drive uh, climb does uh, test the legs and split it just a little bit. That, that, that big uh, lead group of about 60 teams was fractured in the middle and then uh, it started to break up even more so as uh, Speed Company Racing, I know we must call them Obea, Leet, Speed Company Racing, but Egger and Baum. Well, I did have a manage to have a chat with uh, Gail Geger before, and I said, well, you're employing the same tactics this year as last year. He said, well, we had no real tactic last year, so yes, we're doing the same, <laughs> which is go hard. Yeah, and it's uh, if you feel good, you should go hard, mm. because you, you never know if you'll have a day where you feel a little bit off. Uh, so the days where you feel good, y you have to make it count. Uh, that's really what it's all about in this uh, race, to go hard when you feel good and kind of manage manage your energy when you know things get a little bit tougher they were told yesterday to go hard because they're single track very early on and that's exactly what happened they got into uh, the single track they headed up the gorge uh, climb past former uh, retreat and uh, hammered it up there so th this uh, really is uh, a tough stage right into the single track uh, early on and so these riders will find out this is a little further back uh, in the field and uh, tristan nokia and uh, adrian voices uh, Very important yeah, team, backup team, backup team for team, yeah. Matt Beers and, of course, Christopher Blevins. We have here, just to see that there's a losing a bit of touches, Nino Schota and Andre Frischkinecht from the very front group. We saw in those super narrow trails, if the riders in the front just put a bit of effort in, a bit of a kick through the corners, they can uh, give create a little bit of a gap, which, of course, puts the teams behind under better pressure. Nino Schota... Uh, pulling Andre Frischneck back to that very front group, the front group of elite riders. And of course, we can see you can see the yellow jerseys there with uh, the uh, Orbia Liet Speed Company team putting huge pressure down. They can smell blood in the water, and uh, when it's uh, Scott Sram, they're going to take every opportunity they can to distance that favourite team. Yeah, and uh, you heard uh, Matt Beers at the start saying we will. Um, it, it may all go off towards the end of the, uh, the, the stage and they'll just mark and, and, and watch each other until then. But with a, a team who, who are riding as aggressively as this pair, you really have to be on your game, not to uh, let the gaps open up. And you can see the gap back to uh, Scott Sram. They're starting to close that gap on these steep climbs up on the uh, side of uh, the Babylon uh, climb. It really is a tough, tough climb. On the so lower slopes of the mountain. The so. nuances of the tactics of riding in a group like this is that the riders um, at, at the front, um, Eger and Baum, they'll know that even if they, uh, 
they just put as much pressure they don't, if they ride at their threshold it means that the riders behind have to go just a little bit harder than them to close that gap and that's the idea that uh, they've had we, we had it we, uh, it was clear that early on we could see that uh, lucas baum and george Egger had an issue we've yet to hear exactly what it is we're just uh, getting some information from the trail no doubt we'll have a chat to stefan Sam who is following them it looked as though he'd, uh, we, we, we were able to, yeah, his chain dropped off a little bit early, Lucas Baumi. It didn't take too long, but at the pace they're going, that gap opens up, and then the effort to get back. Yeah, this elastic effect, when you always have to close the gap, it is super hard on the body, and it will cost energy uh, at the end. Brief glimpse there of our women's group, which uh, very quickly uh, distilled down to the top three teams in uh, the GC after yesterday's prologue, and uh, we, that may well be how it'll... Uh, head out now this is that lead group no one really going uh, to the front here just uh, you can get the picture there just uh, backing off a little bit at the moment after that it's fearsome uh, start yeah but so a lot of the teams they kind of you know started showing the cards from the very beginning so yes they are together now but uh, some teams will have worked harder and more above their limit to get to this point and now it looks like you know it gets a little bit tactical people sitting in yeah, the uh, women's uh, teams heading off. This is uh, the Cannondale team on the uh, front of that group early on. They are quite far back on uh, GC, but uh, went into the single track first. And you can see the uh, CM.com uh, orange leaders jerseys on the shoulders of Gomez Vifan and uh, her partner Katharina Nash. And up the rotary drive climb all together here. All together, this is uh, very open, and even though it's a uh, it's uh, steep, uh, it makes sense to kind of sit in and wait a little bit because it is a long day out there, and yeah, the most uh, hard parts are still to come. Absolutely, it uh, is one of those uh, attritional days today, as <laughs> as the entire week is, of course, because uh, the, the challenges just uh, keep coming, and uh, it just gets tougher and tougher. It's how you are able to. Uh, to manage your efforts and uh, feed and, and eat. And I mean, after yesterday, that, that relatively early finish, relatively, um, nutrition and getting it set up for today is important. Yeah, it's super important. And also remember yesterday was actually one of the longest uh, uh, off-bike transfer uh, transfers that the teams and the riders had to do uh, all the way from uh, Meridam uh, to here. Um, so yeah, it cost a little bit of energy, you know, they couldn't go straight into recovery mode in the camper vans, they had to sit in the car and, you know, transfer to a new place and get everything set up and uh, but today it's uh, more about getting into the rhythm and uh, yeah. Well this is uh, on the top of uh, road, they've come off Rotary Drive and there's a gravel road that runs atop on the top of this uh, mountain and the group in the women's race still together but the uh, orange jerseys on the front. Yeah, I mean, if they feel good, they have to they have to apply the pressure. Yes, they are in the lead, but uh, you never know what happens. And if you feel good, you have to go. And we see the Cannondale uh, Vest team here with the rest of the field. They s looked at as if they were setting the pace early on, and now they're dropping a little bit back because of the fierce pace uh, set by the specialized women here at the very front. Um, I had a brief chat with some of the riders this, uh, this morning, and... Um, it's quite clear that some riders prefer the short, punchy effort like a prologue and other riders were more looking into getting into the groove and getting into the longer stages. For example, Amy Wakefield uh, said as she was looking forward to, to the longer stages, she would feel much more comfortable and at home and, you know, as we progress. And uh, I also think that Katarina Nash really, really loved to have these long back-to-back -back, uh, long days. So. Uh, Definitely, we, we will see maybe a little bit of a different uh, picture today uh, than yesterday. Well, we saw yesterday from the just the f in terms of sheer firepower, which is the, the prologue is a good measure of that. They were so close. In fact, the lead was changing all the time. At one point, we saw uh, Wakefield and Lil leading the race, and then it kind of switched around. So uh, it all depends on uh, on how the riders cope with the big days, and of course, any uh, eventuality. The Real, the marker, of the mark of a really good marathon is the ability to manage uh, disaster or at least mishap, and uh, no doubt the Absa Cape Epic will throw many of those at the riders, and it's all about how they cope with it. So that's how yeah. we see that's how the race will unfold. I mean, it's it's, it's almost inevitable that at some stage something uh, 
is, is going to happen. It's just uh, the magnitude of that, how big and how serious it is, and, uh, and, and therefore how you deal with it. Um, as we made reference to Lucas Baum dropping a chain quickly back up and off he went. If, th if that's the only issue they have today, well, then uh, th th then they'll be delighted. But, uh, yes, it costs a bit of an effort to get back on, but uh, they'll be delighted with that. Well, we saw Amy Wakefield, she crashed in that corner we saw earlier in the, uh, in the broadcast and uh, got up, dusted herself off and continued, lost only 30 seconds or so. And um, and continued, and th that's that's one of those things. If you can have a, a if you can have a mishap like that, and you're back on, that's that done. You can tick off your crash for the day and uh, <laughs> and, and move on. Hopefully, you don't have more. But uh, it's it's kind of it's a cheap lesson. It teaches uh, teaches a rider just to pay a little bit more attention, and um, and and really just come just I guess uh, be able to um, have the confidence they've managed one mishap and and have the ability to manage more well they've up and out of the gorge and now the uh, three leading teams on the front of the women's race separated out yeah and this is this is what we expected uh, based on yesterday's prologue we had the top three teams really separating themselves from the rest and this is uh, after the first hard efforts we now see that they have uh, gapped uh, the rest of the field uh, at the moment we can see it's uh, the sungo specialized team setting the pace at the front and uh, yeah, we'll see if they'll be dictating uh, the race uh, today, or we will have other teams, uh, yeah, making the plan. Well, just a reminder on that uh, GC, that would be the results of the prologue are in fact the GC results uh, overnight, and 91 Songo specialized at one hour 18, 57 seconds, but very close behind, seven seconds back, are Kim Lacourt and Vera Lawser of Efficient Infinity Insure. And E Fortnet Seattle Coffee Company's Wakefield and Lil at 30 seconds. So all still to play for. Well, uh, looking down at uh, the beautiful creation uh, wine uh, estate and uh, cellar down uh, in the Hibble and Arda Valley. Absolutely spectacular venue this is. It's a water point as well as they head uh, up the valley. But uh, early we caught up with uh, a South African sporting legend who made his name. Uh, on the rugby field of South Africa and uh, wrote his name into the record books as uh, the man who kicked South Africa to their first Rugby World Cup win, Joel Stransky, who is now very much a mountain biker. Let's hear from him. You know, the journey doesn't start when you get here and you're standing in that chute on Sunday morning. The journey starts when you commit and you say, we're going we're gonna to do the Absolute Cape Epic and we're going to do it together. And it's an early start, chilly, so yeah, hoping the day goes well. Marius is obviously going to try to ride under two hours. It's a bit of a bit of an adrenaline rush at the moment. I think my heartbeat is <laughs> is up there somewhere. <laughs> so uh, yeah, excited, cool. nervous, nervously excited. Marius did Ironman two weeks ago as a bit of a warm up for today. Welcome to the prologue here at Mirandale. Hasn't been here for five or six years now. It's great to be back. It's, um, it's a tough little route, 25, 26 k's. It's about 700 meters of climbing. Starts up the chute with a straight climb up the mountain and then a really steep drop off. And after that, it gets a little easier. Finishes hard again with a big climb and then you come down the berms into the village. Tough start and always, always such a great pleasure to see the village and to be racing back down to the line here. When I think of Mirandol and I think of the, the trails and the tracks here, the first thing that comes to mind is my crash from uh, 2017 where I scribbled myself properly, <laughs> ran out of skill, talent, ambition, a whole lot of things and that's mountain biking, and just like it is, it's life, you know, the life chucks hurdles at you and, and obstacles and you climb over those and you go again and that's what mountain biking is. So very proud to be riding my 10th. Cape Epic this year. Firstly, it's a privilege to ride one Cape Epic. I think to be able to get to ride 10 is really is something that you sort of don't really think about when you're undertaking your, your first Cape Epic. But you know, when you come and you ride your first Cape Epic and you realize what this event does, not only for mountain biking in South Africa, but actually for the communities and the towns that we go through and, and what it injects in terms of much needed funding into hospitality, into restaurants, into hotels, into catering, you know, into services. You know, that's, that's actually what, what brings us back uh, every single year. You almost create this family. Oh, that, was, uh, that was epic. That was a good start. Uh, we went on at Bach 5 and then uh, 
Well, the big question on everyone's lips in the 2023 APSA Cape Epic is which team will be able to upset the juggernaut of the specialized team in the women's category? have here probably the most likely, the voted the most likely person to upset that, and that's Candace Lill. Candace, tell us what you're going to be riding for the 2023 campaign. So I've got the Cannondale Skullful High Mod uh, with SRAM AXS. Um, I've got a bike yoke dropper on there as well. Um, and I'm running 120 lefty suspension on the front and a Fox 115 rear. Now you've been riding this bike for quite a while, many years in fact. Uh, what is it about this bike that you particularly like? Yeah, I've been with Cannondale since 2016 um, and this particular bike is my favorite. Um, I think the best feature for me is the fact that I'm able to run 120 on the front. Um, it's a new addition and yeah, it's made a huge difference to me. And I think having lefty suspension in general is pretty cool because no one else has it and yeah, I enjoy being different like that. So the final question, and the most important question, what do you think your bike weighs? I'm going to say with all the grass on my training wheels, about 10.6. 10.8, 8. How are you feeling this morning after the... Just getting an idea of some of the weapons that they are using now this is earlier today and uh, the Orbea Liet Speed Company Racing uh, team the defending champions on the front with oh and there is uh, a problem Lucas Baum I think it was he went down hard while setting the pace just washing out on this loose gravel and it wasn't just that now having to uh, adjust and, and uh, realign his, his uh, headset and his, his wheel and okay, you don't want this. No, you don't want this. Um, not at this point in the race, especially because first of all, it really upsets your rhythm. You have to like recollect and and you know get into the rhythm. Rhythm, but most importantly, you're actually losing contact with your competitors, and I mean they're not here to wait for you, so <laughs> you have to catch up, and it costs a lot of energy uh, in the end. But it looks like they managed well and actually got back to the group that has formed. But uh, you know they had to burn a few matches to get to this point. Yeah, just a slight lapse of concentration, although to be fair, the uh, trails are of course littered with obstacles and uh, opportunities or potential disasters. Just a bit of a loose uh, corner over there, just caught them out and uh, it can happen to anyone really. And it was such a low speed crash. Luckily not anything serious, although the uh, looked like some issues with, um, with one of the, with the left shoe which uh, the uh, shoes uh, today are fastened with um, with uh, circular fasteners and they have got a kind of a wind-up effect and you adjust the tension through that. And if that breaks, uh, it'd be a very difficult stage to uh, ride for uh, 90 or 80 or however long they had to go at that point um, with a loose shoe. Yeah, and it's not like it's a, uh, like a, a pair of laces. You can just tie them. Uh, if that thing breaks off, uh, <laughs> you're in trouble. And do remember that along the course, the teams have tech boxes, um, but with it could be that there's uh, maybe 20 kilometers to the nearest tech box where he would be able to go in and maybe even have a spare shoe. Uh, I know some teams have spare shoes uh, in this tech box. Uh, this is a theme that we'll dive in a little bit uh, more um, as the week progresses, but in this tech box, the team will have spare parts, spare equipment, um, and maybe even a, a spare shoe. But uh, he would still have to make it all the way to this uh, eventual tech box in case he broke his shoes. And of course, they may have to improvise as, improvise as well. Some Most of the tech boxes, they'll have a, something like a cable tie or something like that inside of it. Might have to uh, do some improvisation with uh, cable ties or duct tape or something like that. They're just heading up the Cutcliffe uh, climb here. And what we could see there was the wind. Yeah, 
up. Hectic, hectic win. We're live now. So there we saw this uh, big group that had reformed on the front after that initial attack by uh, Orbea Leet uh, Speed Company was uh, nullified mainly by uh, some good uh, counter riding from uh, the teams behind them and by the problems that uh, uh, Baum and Egg have had. But uh, certainly the wind is blustering. You can see the trees there blowing there. So that is going to be a factor today on a long, long, uh, hard day today. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's a little bit like with uh, road uh, racing. So when you've got wind, you can really use that into your advantage. Uh, when the wind comes from, for example, from the side, it's, it's harder for teams to draft on one another. And it's more down to the actual strength uh, of the team compared to the uh, strength of other teams. So, yeah. Wind definitely plays a big role here. On board now and uh, watching the leaders. Now, the yellow jerseys, we can just make out they're still in this, uh, this group. I'm not sure that that group is quite as big as uh, we saw a little bit earlier. And uh, I think the yellow jerseys are there. That is uh, Beers and Blevins as well as, uh, well, there it is. We can see them streaking out, okay, over the uh, single track. So at the 45 kilometer mark, or 46 kilometer mark to be exact, that was the, the water point called the one. And uh, a bit of a single track section after that, but uh, that water point, uh, it was really five teams that were emerging. It was Orbia Liet Speed Company, Willia Pirelli Factory, Scott SRAM, Toyota Specialized 91, Canyon Northwave, and over two minutes back, Pago Eurosteel and Canyon Northwave 2. That would be the backup team of, uh, of Sievolt and Stozek. And uh, the uh, we could say the losers of the day are Buff Megamo. They were a favourite coming, a favourite team coming into the race, and uh, they were a little just they have been distanced, and they are over two minutes, two and a half minutes back. But they will have good company with them because they're riding with Samuel Poro and Vincenzo Nibali. Who will get a real idea of what the Absa Cape Epic is all about today. Just looking at this terrain, you could see how carefully the uh, riders were, were going around their sharp uh, bends there. Even Matt Beers at the, th at the end there, because he knows what can happen. We saw it happen to Lucas Baum, washing out on this loose uh, gravel. Uh, it doesn't look intimidating. It doesn't look uh, particularly scary. But at the speeds that they're going at here, uh, you wash out very, very quickly and very easily. Yeah, definitely. And remember this course that we have today, it's a mix of uh, rough mm. farm roads and, and, and actually manicured trails. So it's very different and you need to stay focused all the way through. Sometimes maybe you tend to think that one you're once you're on a technical trail, you know, you sharpen your focus. But the thing is, because they're riding so much uh, terrain here that is, you know, maybe ridden for the first time, it's not like ridden in and that makes it uh, very tricky. There can be rocks and trees and bushes and they have to really be careful every single pill stroke. Yeah, it's living up to its untamed moniker, the uh, Apsa Cape Epic, these trails. Yeah, they visited and I remember 2019, a long time ago, the last time the race came here. Occasionally these trails will be ridden by uh, riders from the Hibble and Arda and Amanus mountain bike uh, communities, but uh, not that often. And so they are raw and untamed, that's for sure. Well, we're having a catch up with the route director, Andrika Berger. And he was talking about the Molesworth descent, the descent that we've seen the riders tackling already, the Toyota tough section. And uh, it, he, he intimated that he thinks that this track, that's dual tracks and single track, has never been used since, uh, since by a vehicle since World War II. So the last time a vehicle went through here was World War II. So uh, pretty, pretty rough stuff. That's a long time ago. <laughs> You're quickly doing the calculations <laughs> in your head. That is a years. long time ago. Uh, yeah, so this is the sort of terrain the uh, riders are experiencing, and that is what uh, the Absa Cape Epic is all about. Today's 98-kilometer uh, stage is the first big bite out of uh, what is uh, a uh, tough, tough week of, uh, of riding they've got to deal with. So uh, I don't think this... I'm not sure that this is the, uh, the leading team. But uh, the one thing we can see is the wind just uh, buffeting these riders. It uh, seems to be a northwesterly, and uh, that'll be perhaps in their faces. They may get it uh, behind them coming home, but that'll uh, be in a while still. There is in the far distance uh, where they've come from, Walker Bay and Hermanus, and they made their way up the left-hand side of the uh, Yevil and Arda Valley with the uh, Overberg Mountains surrounding them. Beautiful playground for uh, stage one 
of the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, we've seen drama over the years on, on this stage. Uh, Heat has played a major uh, role in the past uh, on uh, the Hermana stages, but that won't be a factor today. The uh, wind could be. Um, wind, heat, rain, cold, it's all part of what uh, makes this uh, such a, such a, a challenge. And uh, here we are, I think, with the leading group and Martin Stosek at the uh, back of this uh, group. And his partner, Andreas Seerwald, perhaps just ahead. The yellow jersey is just ahead of Stosek, yeah. Yeah, it looks like uh, Kenya Northway here, they're having a, a better day. Uh, th this is more their, their mm. terrain, the longer stages. Uh, Yesterday was maybe a little bit too short and too fast for them, but now they're here with the leaders and they must be feeling it much better today. Yeah, Sivalt and uh, Stosek fourth at the start of today's stage. Won uh, uh, yesterday the prologue by the uh, pair of uh, Beers and Blevins. Three prologue wins in a row for Matt Beers. He's clearly becoming a past master at that he thoroughly enjoys it and the yellow jersey every every time this is an indication of where they are they've just come down that uh, Molzrup uh, descent we talked about uh, Canyon Northwave and they are over a minute back on a general classification so even though they're riding in the group they're still a minute behind in the overall and they know in the back of their minds that they're going to have to make that up at some point they have to make some kind of a move throughout the week to gain back that minute with Toyota Specialized 91's Beers and Blevins, enjoying that comfortable margin. The margin isn't that comfortable over the uh, Scott Sram team. Uh, they're only seven seconds, and there will be a Liat Speed Company who have been particularly aggressive today, uh, 45 seconds off the, uh, off the lead. But we've seen how, uh, how keen they are to make an impact on the race. That uh, spurt, that racing spurt that, we, that made them so famous last year has not died at all. So we're keen to see how they go. And also in the group, Willia Pirelli Factory, Ravensteiner and Elemann. Ravensteiner is the European champion, the marath European marathon champion. And Elemann, the uh, national champion, national champion of Belgium in the marathon category. So they are clearly on great form if they're riding at the top end, at the at really at the front end of the, of the field. And, and at this stage, I mean, those, th those teams are minute, two minutes, uh, well, not even two minutes back, but the, the, the gap isn't big. But you just want to stay with the yellow jerseys at this stage, early on, first marathon stage. Just make sure you, you're with them for as long as possible, even if you can take it to the finish. Um, and worry, if you can stay with them, worry about eking out a couple of seconds uh, later on in the, in the week, maybe. Yeah, we'll see, see how it goes. But yeah, for sure, I mean, if you have uh, dreams and ambitions in the general cl classification, you, you cannot allow yourself to lose contact with, mm. with the yellow jerseys. You need to know exactly where they are, especially because, you know, once the racing is on, it's hard. You, you don't really get any information about the gaps. And if you get information, you can't maybe really rely on it. So you need to have the visual contact as long as possible. I think we're with uh, our women's teams uh, here. I think this is our uh, e-bike uh, racer, rider, and media person. Isla Stowe is on board at uh, Bulls e-bike uh, this year. She'll be keeping us up to date here. Look at this. Uh, look at that wind. My word. It is really, really howling out there. This is where the riders really need to be careful with the wind because uh, the trails are narrow and they're going really fast. We just saw there... We just, you might have seen a number board that was just uh, yeah. on its side of it. That could be because of, that could be from a crash. They are a little bit ahead. It's Wakefield and Lil just trailing them by a few seconds. Yeah, that was just getting a word from, uh, perhaps we can chat to Isla. That was uh, Lossa and uh, her partner, uh, Lacourt. This is the leading uh, team. So... Uh, whether now Isla has gone ahead because they are off the back. Isla, can you hear us? Isla Stowe is on board the uh, Bulls Media e-bike. Isla? Isla Stowe uh, is... Uh, Hello, Isla. Can you uh, hear us out there? Unfortunately, not. Uh, I, and look, um, our communications with them is going to be very tough, but uh, it's very interesting to see what uh, is transpiring here because 
the race leaders in the orange jersey are on their own there. Whether they're up ahead or whether they're behind, I'm not sure. No, uh, it's definitely by this time uh, something has happened. Mm. Either someone is uh, has attacked or they had an issue. We sti still need to get that um, uh, confirmation. But uh, for sure, something is happening. Uh, the race is starting, starting to unfold here. Isla, can you hear us? No, unfortunately, uh, we can't get uh, control there. We're getting news that uh, Candace uh, Lil has had a big crash. Uh, so uh, that uh, certainly will impact Candace Lil and uh, Amy Wakefield's uh, hopes here in the women's race. Perhaps this is the lead, and uh, they are um, in the... Uh, in, in control of the stage at this at this moment, Gomez Viafan and uh, Nash of 91 Songo Specialized. Yeah, you can clearly see that they are going for mm. it, and I assume that the reason why they are pushing hard is because they got a gap and they're yeah. in the lead. It looks like uh, Sophia, she's really looking well after Katarina Nash, making sure that uh, Katarina can uh, draft uh, on her wheel, uh, really benefiting from optimizing the teamwork as much as possible. Uh, when it comes down to this, this race is all about managing your efforts. And we're back with what we think are the chasing two women's teams. We can see Candice Lill and Amy Wakefield just passing. It looks like they're trying to pass um, the team with Vera yeah. Lusa. So clearly something li like a crash has possibly set them back. And now they're doing everything they can to, to minimize uh, the losses and catch back with the leading team. Just to uh, clarify, Candice Lill here in the South African champion's jersey. Uh, she is the champion, marathon champion of South Africa, riding with Amy Wakefield in the red jerseys of the Absa African uh, leaders of the Namibian champion, Vera Lossa, and Kim Lecourt, the Mauritian champion. You may have seen them on the prologue wearing those jerseys, but today, of course, as the leaders of that category, they'll be in the, the red jerseys. And their closest rivals are the team uh, just ahead of them. Uh, Amy and uh, Candace. So now that uh, is the uh, bike just uh, racing up the road. And uh, this is perhaps further up the road, the uh, slick pair, the uh, legacy that is so, so deeply ingrained in this uh, Cape Epic of uh, the specialized team. Back with the men and guess who's on the front and putting the hammer down. Orbea, Liet uh, and uh, Speed Company Racing and they're looking to shatter that lead group again. And back to the, the women once again. Uh, it's clear that uh, the 91 Sanka Specialized uh, pairing here, they're feeling good. And they will try to maximize as much as they can on that. Uh, they have a slight uh, lead on the uh, GEC after yesterday. And of course, they will do everything they can to, to open up that gap even more. Uh, I know that they are very ambitious about this race. and. Yeah, when we reach the, the final uh, stage of this race, they will still want to be the team in orange. And the more time they can pull out on the competitors every single day, the better and the more uh, safe uh, they will feel on the GC. So they are on the mission here and they are looking absolutely smooth. Just a correction, uh, we've had it uh, brought to our attention that in fact it wasn't Candace, it was her partner, Amy uh, Wakefield, who's had the, uh, the crash. Um, but that Looked as though she'd recovered and uh, got back on the bike. I mean, she had a, a fall yesterday that wasn't too serious. Hopefully today wasn't too serious, and she's uh, uh, back and riding hard. She's had health issues of late, and uh, they have. Uh, uh, she's had a problem with it, but she hasn't missed a day's training. Um, but she had to dig incredibly deep at the uh, National Marathon Championships in Paul recently uh, to finish in third place there. But uh, she's uh, she's got incredible powers of determination and strength. And you will see the specialized women just having to navigate a corner. I think it was, it looked like a bird. The chicken or something. Yeah. <laughs> standing in the way. <laughs> see, and that's, you know, coming from overseas, so these are the experiences that you remember once you leave the place. I mean, yes, the, hard, the racing is hard, but you know, that's, you get so much, uh, you experience so much uh, during a week like this, and it's, uh, it's quite unique and quite special. We've definitely had our fair share of wildlife. There was a famous picture of... Uh, of one of the riders passing an elephant in the early years when we went through Neisner, and we've seen um, we've seen Nino Schurter, um coming to terms with the cow, I think was the last one, and of course the uh, the Robert Menon story when he was hit by a small buck, and uh, it happened so fast I don't even know that he even saw the animal that hit him. In fact, I think he believed it was a, a pig. 
<laughs> he did at the time <laughs> believe it was a peck, yes. <laughs> um, sadly, um, it, uh, it did uh, uh, cause quite a bit of damage, but uh, that was that was perhaps the most famous wildlife uh, moment. It of it and probably the most unfortunate, because it yes. did end his campaign. Yeah. I think he broke his ribs after mm -hmm. that, but... Uh, Hopefully, uh, with uh, some friendly, uh, some friendly animals, um, riders can uh, can share the trails. Yeah, yeah, but this is all part of the the experience, um, and that's what uh, you know riders uh, love about. Of course, nobody wants to get injured, but you know, yeah, it's. Uh, and we were back with the men's uh, racing, and we can see Kenyan Northwave. They look like they are starting to struggle a little bit now. Yeah, that's Seervolt in his uh, in his German champs jersey. You also see the uh, stripes of the world championship. He has, he's a former world champion. He's struggling to get back on. It's unclear as to what's happened to him. But, uh, just having a look at uh, his uh, outfit, if there are any uh, marks on it from, uh, from perhaps a crash or if he's just struggling with the pace. Yeah, looking to uh, regain contact with uh, the bunch. Uh, perhaps his partner, I think his partner is at the back uh, of this, this uh, bunch, Martin Storsek. Uh, and this is why these men are just relentless as they're going ahead. They've had a fall. They've had a little issue with the dr ship chain. And the Eger and Baum are holding nothing back again. No, nothing. They're not holding anything back. And that's, I'm quite impressed with these two um, young riders that they just come here and they seem fairly unimpressed. You know, they focus on what they are good at, and that is just attacking and riding hard. And it's uh, really, really causing damage to their competitors. It looks like now uh, the leaders' jersey, the yellow jerseys of uh, the Nido Toyota Specialized, they, they have to respond to the attack of the, the speed company racing because they know once they, they are on the gas, it's dangerous. There's Stosek, Frischnick, Schurter. That was Matt Beers Beers. Being, as be is being led by uh, Chris Levens. Levens having to close the gap. Of course, when you are attacked, if you're the yellow jersey, tactically, you have to, you may be riding in defense, but if a rider or a team goes up the road, it really is up to the yellow jersey to chase. And Nino Schota and Andre Frischnick and, of course, the Canyon Northwave team, they can sit back and let the yellow jerseys do all of the work. So it's really up to them to chase. It's one of the tactics that we see a lot in road racing, and uh, it's translating into mountain biking with uh, this uh, tooth and nail fight that is going on right now with the top four teams. We don't seem to have sight of Willia, per Willia Pirelli at the moment. They may have dropped back. I'm going to keep an eye on what happened to them. But it's down to four teams at the front of the race. And we can see here now Chris Brevins is pushing so hard at the front to minimize the damage. Clearly, he does not want the speed company racing to get a gap because he knows that if they get a gap, if they get away and they are out of visual contact, you know, they can... It's dangerous because when you don't know what the gap is, you know, it can grow ever so slightly and all of a sudden you reach the finish line and you realize that they pulled out maybe five, ten minutes uh, on you and that is absolutely not what you want. I think we're going uh, a little bit further back in the field now. You know, the uh, gap to uh, Orbea Laird Speed Company on GC is 45 seconds and... Uh, well, some teams might wait for later in the week to make their move and make up time. Not, not to go get and Lucas Baum. They know one way, and that is uh, the way they rode last year: attack, attack, and attack again. If it doesn't work, you attack again. And uh, uh, no one will ever forget the way they decimated uh, the field on that final day, going to Valdivie from Stellenbosch last year, uh, when they overturned a nearly seven-minute uh, lead to win the uh, stage and the race. Overall, they were came close to uh, the yellow jerseys yesterday. They have yet to wear the yellow jerseys because they were handed them, uh, or you wear them in a race, handed them at the end of last year's race, but uh, obviously that was the last stage. Well, there's Raven Steiner and Vart Alleman of William Pirelli. So they're in there as well. Well, it looks like they were doing the pace setting uh, as well, sharing that load, which is a perhaps a bit of a mistake. They really could leave it completely up to the yellow jerseys. And, of course, that not only lets them chase, but it also tires out the yellow jerseys, puts them under pressure on today, and, of course, uh, it has the impact. Any extra effort today will have impact over the, the following week. So it's um, perhaps a bit of a tactical error there by the Italians, although it's very hard to tell exactly what's going on on the trail. We'll have to ca have a catch-up with Stefan Sam to understand exactly what's going on, but it's clear to us right now that uh, there's one team that has a big goal, 
and that's the yellow jerseys at the end of the at the end of the day. We saw a bit of dust on the, the uh, back of George Egger. He was the one that went down on that corner that we saw earlier. And Lucas Baum, he's looking after his partner, Lucas Baum, who is following. And they are on an absolute stormer of a day. They're heading towards the uh, the 64 kilometer mark. We'll get a chime check with him. We know how I do love those time checks. And uh, we're looking at the 64 kilometer mark to see exactly what their progress is, what the gap is. But it's clear that the yellow jerseys are under big pressure at the moment. They certainly are. This pair are making every pedal stroke count as they uh, ride through this lush Fainbos uh, vegetation with uh, some sandy uh, surfaces. And they've got to be wary of that on those downhills, as we've already seen. Ego was the man uh, who fell on the loose uh, trails. But uh, that's the risk that uh, and reward that uh, comes with the racing at this end of the, the event. You uh, push as hard as you possibly can go, push to the edge, and maybe go over and survive, and maybe not. Uh, that's the, the, the risks you take. Well, that's the thing about these trails and uh, about mountain bike. If you're an experienced mountain biker, if you're riding, uh, just riding around and uh, enjoying the uh, in enjoying the scenery and not pushing too hard, it's highly unlikely that you will fall unless there's something uh, really major that you really major error. But it's just an indication of how hard the riders we saw in the women's category with Amy Wakefield crashing again for the second time in the second uh, second day and uh, we saw uh, George Ego just coming down on that corner perhaps letting his concentration lapse a little bit this trail does require full focus all the way through there are no free kilometers in the Absa Cape Epic yeah, one one rider who can vouch for that uh, first hand is Samuel Gaze who uh, came uh, out here and uh, raced at the sharp end and had a big fall on this day. Uh, I think it was. A, it certainly was at a minor stage, and basically his race ended there. Um, he's gone on to win the marathon world championships. He is the marathon champion of the world right now. So uh, and the short track world yeah, champion. Yeah, the short track world champion. So he's uh, resurgent again, Sam Gaze. But yeah, that's the sort of uh, thing it can do. Here are women's leaders. And we just uh, we see now that Katarina Nash is uh, at the front. She just had a glimpse over her shoulder, so clearly, no, actually, sorry, it's Sophia at the front right now, and she's looking after her partner, but also looking back to see what the gaps are. And <laughs> we're just getting the confirmation now here at the 45 kilometer mark that they actually, they are in the lead. They have a 25 second gap over E4 Net Seattle uh, Coffee Company, and a 47 second gap over Efficient Infinity Ensure. So now the racing is on and every team will be riding as hard as they can to either open up the gap even more or to minimize the damage. And it's a tough time with uh, so many kilometers to go, not yet quite at the halfway mark of the race. There are three contending teams. Very clear that those three teams are the, are the ones that will be contending for the lead. It's almost like, uh, dare we say it, the podium is kind of settled already with uh, in terms of the pecking order of the field. But... Uh, the order of which uh, at the end of the week is still to be confirmed. Absolutely. This is the leading team, though, in the men's race. Uh, as we flick uh, between the two uh, races, uh, obviously connectivity, we're in some wild and remote uh, parts of the Overberg uh, here in the Himalanada Valley. So, yeah, the uh, connectivity won't always be 100% with all the bikes, but uh, we'll bring you every bit we possibly can of uh, th this event as they... Bend to the task of another steep climb. Georg Eger and Lucas Baum of Orbea Liet and uh, Speed Company Racing. And they're actually in the, the perfect situation right now. They're in the lead. They have a gap. Um, they don't have their competitors like right next to them. They don't have to uh, follow the moves or the, the, the pace of other teams. They can really settle, settle into the rhythm. And maybe that's why we saw a few mishaps uh, earlier on. Uh, when you're riding close to your competitors, you have to respond, you have to stay with them. And now, you know, the track is clear, they're at the very front, and they can really dictate uh, the pace uh, and the race from the, fr from the front. One team we, ha we haven't spoken about really yet is, is Nino Schurt and Andri Frischnick. They were second uh, on the uh, prologue by seven seconds. They're 38 seconds behind, uh, ahead of this pair on GC. Um, and that's a we, we watched it closely yesterday. We saw them in the prologue, and there were thoughts that maybe Frischnick was, uh, was perhaps towards the end of that starting to uh, feel the heat from uh, Schurter. 
and the management of that combination is going to be a subplot uh, throughout this week. Well, Vrishkinect has absolutely d gone up a level. We spoke to his father, Thomas Vrishkinect, and it's, uh, he's impressed that his son has stepped up a level. He, his son knows exactly what he has to do. He's riding with none other than Nino Schurter, 10-time world champion. And uh, the fact that he's riding in the front group of five select teams, and m even more so the teams that have been dropped from that group, it's clear that he is on really good form and uh, stepping into those very big shoes. Just taking yeah. some nutrition and uh, just looking at uh, the Bulls Media e-bike pictures from Thomas Ditch. Thomas Ditch, a uh, former member of the Bulls team, one of the uh, most uh, really important components uh, that led to the three victories of Stefan Sam and five, a record five victories of none other than Carl Platt. USN Hydration Station, they're coming to now, this pair. And that is at 62 kilometers. They flash through. We'll get some uh, timing stats there that Neil is licking his lips to uh, analyze for us very shortly. Oh, I love the time checks. <laughs> Keeping a very close watch on that. And How long through 62 k? They've passed at 64 kilometers. Orbia Liet Speed Company have passed through there. There's two hours and 37 minutes and 52 seconds of elapsed time. We'll be keeping an eye on those timing mats. As soon as the feed comes through, we'll let you know what the, those, uh, let's just confirm that those are not official uh, times. It's an indication for us to know just how things are going on the ground. It's a very, the, the timing mats, they tell a very big story of the race, just how much impact Orbia Lee at Speed Company are having on the race. And it's Toyota Specialized 91, Willie Pirelli Factory, Scott Sram MTB Racing, Canyon North, they've all together and they are around about 35 seconds off the pace of uh, Orbia Liet Speed Company. Egger and Baum are together. They will cooperate, and uh, they do have, uh, really, they can just pin their ears back and go, and um, they might actually be able to rely on a little bit of politics in the back with, um, between the groups of Toyota Specialized 91, William Pirelli, Factor uh, Pirelli Factory, and Scott Sram. Canyon North Haven. If they start to hesitate, if they start to look at each other and start to fight about who's going to work, who's going to who's going to um, try and close that gap, and who's going to cooperate and who isn't, and that could definitely play into the favour of Orbia Liet Speed Company. I just think this is fantastic to watch uh, stage one. It's the marathon, one of the first marathon stage, and the defending champions have come out here and said, "We're the men uh, who won this last year. You want to beat us this year? This is how you get it. This is how we're going to ride, and you're going to have to hunt us down." Absolutely beautiful, uh, their, their, their attacking approach. And certainly no, last year's win was no fluke yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. We did say in the broadcast yesterday, we were discussing the fact that it was, that it, the cards did certainly fall in their favor. Um, Stozek and, um, and Seervolt, they had issues towards the end and that did uh, play a role in it. Of course, we saw the tire issues of, um, of Scott Sram, which uh, led to a domino effect of um, having to put a lot of effort to close those gaps. So yes, it did It, it did play to their favor, but they made the most they of it. And they were the team that made the most of it. No one else uh, was able to do do what they did to ride with that, uh, that aggression and that speed and, and back themselves and take the gamble. Mm. Uh, amazing. And what we saw yesterday they placed uh, third and had uh, 45 seconds uh, to the leaders. Um, if I were in their shoes and knowing that I was beaten by 45 seconds, I would be a little bit worried, but they seemed super confident uh, despite of that. Um, which tells me, you know, what as spectators we see them ride, we try to match you know, how they feel and what they go through. But actually, as a rider, you have a very different feeling being out there, something that we cannot see. And clearly they had a feeling, you know what, we're feeling very good and we are going to, yeah, race so hard. Just looking at the bottom right-hand corner, the virtual leaderboard, that's the virtual GC. So if the race were to stop right now and the yellow jerseys was to be decided, Toyota Specialized 91 would still hold those yellow jerseys, but that gap is getting narrowed by the second Scott Sram MTB Racing, still virtually in second, and the pairing of Baum <laughs> and Egger. And the civil just uh, riding away for looking over his shoulder, thinking, where are they? Where's my partner? Well, he's at the back of this group, is Martin Storsek, as they uh, try and uh, perhaps cooperate to try and close that gap. Because, uh, well, civil we saw earlier having to regain contact, maybe he had a, a little bit of a mechanical, but he's certainly looking strong now, is uh, the German champion and uh, the most uh, recent but one uh, world marathon champion. 
and generally regarded as the best marathon in the world. He won the world championships on an extremely selective course. And uh, just looking a little bit back at, uh, looks like uh, Blevins. Blevins is having an issue. He's pulling, he's reaching into his back pocket. It's unclear exactly what's wrong, but his partner has not yet noticed. His partner, Matt Beers, has gone to the front. This could be disastrous for his partner. He needs to look back. He needs to keep an eye. And of course, the others are not going to tell him because they know how this will devastate the team. Uh, what kind of impact that this, this gap could have on the team is, uh, is immense. And uh, they're not going to tell him anything. And it looked like uh, Christopher Blemens was kind of looking down to his uh, rear wheel. So I'm guessing he could have a slow leak, uh, slow rear uh, puncture. He could and be reaching for his, for his uh, inflator. Exactly, exactly. And remember, this is a team's race. You must race in pairs. And being out there, you know, you have a chopper over your head. You have motorcycles. There's a lot of noise going on. And here you can see Matt. He has, he has several riders behind and between him and his partner. Communication is absolutely key, but it's, it's super difficult out there. And that's why you need to actually stay alert the whole time, not only on the track, that, but that you're actually with your partner. It is a fascinating scenario and quite dramatic here for the uh, yellow jerseys because Matt Beers is on the front. No one is going to go ahead of him here. They're going to let him do his thing here, thinking that uh, he's thinking that his partner's uh, with him in this group. He's, uh, as far as we can see, still not in that group, and he's putting distance into him in, in the hope that he'll catch these two, but uh, not knowing that his partner's off the back there. Drama in the chase group. Meanwhile, the leaders here are Eger and Baum. A look across uh, to the left from uh, Georg Eger to see what the uh, damage is. And it was just over half a minute when they went through the uh, USN hydration station. And they are still putting uh, it down here. The uh, Germans really, really hammering it along. As we are now on the back of uh, Amy Wakefield, who did have that fall, we are led to believe, a little bit earlier today. And uh, she and Candace Zill, though, perhaps not so much damage because they managed to get back up and uh, move into second place ahead of Vera Lossa and Kim Lacord. Speed Company racing just pushing it hard at the, s at the front as they should be doing. Um, it's yeah, they're going extremely well today. If they can open up a gap and feel good today, they should maximize as much as possible. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, just ahead of this are the uh, s uh, 91 Zongo Specialized te team in uh, this group. So, so it looks like the teams. Yeah. So Amy Wakefield and Candice Lil must have caught back to yep. the leading specialized team, we believe. Yes, we can see. I think Candice Lil is at the front, uh, having two uh, specialized riders between uh, her and her partner. So she, on this narrow trail, may be able to dictate the pace. That's Question good effort. Is if, yeah. if if Candice Lil and Amy Wakefield they had to push hard to get back to the specialized women or if the specialized women were you know wouldn't say fading but just you know riding a little bit more uh, conservatively well let's try and find out isla stowe can you hear us isla we can see isla's microphone and uh, isla are you with us uh, out on the trails there Unfortunately not, uh, Isla not able to uh, talk to us, but uh, this is the drama at the front of the women's race as they uh, head up this rough, rocky, uh, raw trail. And uh, so the leaders, the cm.com uh, orange uh, leaders jerseys are together with Candice Lill and uh, Amy Wakefield and uh, the e uh, Seattle Coffee Co. team and uh, the team that's losing out at the moment is the team in second place uh, on GC, Vera Lossa and uh, Kim Lacourt in the red Daps African jersey leaders. They are not in this group. Well, all credit for catching that or closing that gap after the crash. I mean, Wakefield having uh, an accident today and uh, they've closed the gap to 91 Songa Specialized, Sofia Gomez, Villafana and uh, Katarina Nash. So still uh, very open in terms of the stage and uh, Candice Lill and Amy Wakefield still have a lifeline um, having survived that crash. Here we go. Back. We're back with the yellow jerseys. It clearly was an issue with Christopher Williams. We saw him reaching frantically into his back pocket, possibly looking for a, a multi-tool or an inflator. We'll get some word from Stefan Sam on the bike as to 
what exactly happened to the yellow jerseys. The tech zone at uh, Spurkfontein is probably now about seven, uh, six or seven kilometers away. So if it is a technical issue, they'll have to nurse the bike through to the tech zone at uh, Spurkfontein and then see if they can get it uh, sorted there. But there's clearly an issue here. It's clearly an issue. But it looks like uh, that they have managed to fix whatever is uh, what's the issue? We'll still need to see that. It'll be interesting to see if this team chooses to go into the tech zone, swap a wheel, or try to get fixed, whatever is uh, what was the issue. If Chris feels that he could plug the tire uh, and keep the, the, the wheel spinning with no problem that, and that he's not losing air in the, the wheel, um, I'm not sure they're going to go in and swap a wheel, because if you plugged it well, well, it will last to the to the finish line. So we'll see if they choose to go in and, and, and swap a wheel in the tech zone or if they'll just continue riding. And this is the chase group. Uh, Scott Stram, William Pirelli, as well as Canyon Northwave in here. And they are chasing the uh, the leaders of the Elite uh, Speed Company Racing who've flown the coupe early on and are charging ahead looking for a stage victory here. A drama in the men's race, but a drama in the women's race, as one would expect on day one, stage one of the uh, Absa Cape Epic. Well, we remember the prologue was so close, both in the men's and the women's category, and uh, it's, it's, the same, it's the same today. Mm. It's going to be, we're hitting the last two thirds, or the last third of the race, and uh, we're still guessing ourselves, we're guessing who could be the winner. Well, the explosive nature of... Uh, the riding from Baum and Ega has really detonated this uh, men's race because it has put uh, these teams under pressure. The yellow jersey, something happened there, so they've now uh, starting to lose uh, time. And they, uh, at the start of the day, were seven seconds clear of Scott Stram mountain bike uh, racing, and then Obia at Speed Company were 45 seconds. So uh, right now, if the race were to end, it would be uh, the f an opportunity for Ega and Baum to wear the yellow jerseys if it would have stopped now, but there's lots that can happen between now and then. So, uh, Wart Allemann, Fabian Rabensteiner, Martin Storsek and Andreas Servold, and Nino Schurt and Andres Frischnick uh, make this very select and elite group of chasers on these uh, green farm fields as they head through the uh, Overberg region and uh, head back towards uh, Hermanus. Relentless pace. Yeah, you can see Nino Schurt is really pushing it at the front right now. He's um, clearly feeling good and he's ambitious and he knows that uh, that the um, Toyota Specialized team, they had an issue. And yeah, you need to profit on that. You need to profit on, you know, getting a gap and being able to distance your rivals. And that's what he's doing right now, full speed. Lots of uh, short, sharp uh, climbs for them to uh, deal with here, which is going to uh, certainly take a toll on uh, r the riders deep into a nearly 100 kilometer stage. 100 kilometers, and if you look at the profile, it is an extremely jagged profile with lots of very steep climbs. And uh, not all of them, uh, some of them are single track, some of them are, uh, are dual track, but certainly no three kilometers. We've talked about it, we've talked about this a lot in that uh, the difference between uh, a road race and a mountain bike race, such as this, such as the pinnacle of mountain biking, mountain bike stage racing, is that you have to work for absolutely everything. The terrain is special. The Europeans that ride here all can comment on the fact that the trails are really rough and that you have to work for everything. Now that last climb, they're going back up to Rotary Drive. The last time to get back up onto the, uh, the, uh, the escarpment is a brutally hard climb. It's very steep. And that comes within the last uh, sort of six, five or six kilometers. So that is going to be a real test for these riders. Ba beg your pardon, that's the last 10 kilometers. Um, and that will be a, a, a test of stamina and strength towards the end uh, at, at the speed they're riding, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, incredible. When you look at the physio physiological side of uh, mountain biking, you're never like really, mm, well, it's rare that you're just kind of sitting in and, and riding within your limits you're most often riding above your limi limits or below your limits. And that's kind of the uniqueness uh, of uh, this kind of effort. Conversation there, Beers and Blevins. Now, Annika is looking very closely. You will be able to perhaps see what the problem is, Annika. I'm not quite sure, but the thing is, I mean, right now they should be t chasing. 
yeah. and, and they're, they're not. They're not looking like a team that's actually chasing. So, question is, what what has happened? And will they go into the tech zone? Is it a physical <laughs> issue, or is it like something on the bikes? Because I mean, if the they should be, yeah, they should be chasing hard right now. Yeah, there's no question they are not chasing. They are just nursing. Whether they're nursing, well, they're clearly nursing the bike back uh, to the uh, tech zone. And uh, yes, yeah, so clearly something they can't fix on the trail. So they're just saying, let's get, let's get back. Uh, meanwhile, they are leaking time hand over fist to this uh, chase group. Not, uh, and, and, and let's not forget that the leaders are even further up, up the road. And totally di different objectives. We've got the leaders up the road who are just trying to keep a consistent effort. We then have the second group of Nino Schurter driving the pace, desperate to get on back on terms with Egger and Baum. And uh, we have Toyota Specialized 91 really just trying to limit the damage. That's their goal, is to limit the damage, to, m to manage the disaster and uh, get back on as soon as they can, get back on the pace. In the meanwhile, in the, the women's race, we actually see a very impressive uh, performance uh, by the South African team here with uh, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill staying with the, the yellow jerseys. Actually, Candice Lill is the one setting the pace and at the front, and it looks like the ye yellow jersey, uh, sorry, orange jerseys at the moment. I happy to just sit in and and uh, yeah, just uh, profit on the on the Candice uh, Lil setting the pace and just following. It's really up to up to the uh, orange jerseys to defend. The CM women's category is still is still very close with only 30 seconds in it uh, with these two front riders. But uh, it would you le it really would be up to the it would be up to the attacking team to attack and the d and the leaders the the leaders jerseys. All they need to do is just defend. But we did see the um, the orange jerseys actually getting away, getting yeah. a gap. They they had the opportunity, mm. but for some reason they couldn't maintain it. Either Candice Lil and Amy Wakefield were able to actually push up. It's a good sign that yeah, they have yeah, that firepower. Yeah, we'll see. Just a look at the amateur uh, category, which is a new category here for those teams not registered as UCI uh, teams. Digger and the Doughboy. Well, that is uh, a combination that at one stage were. Um, UCI licensed riders on the road. Ian Boswell and uh, Mitch Docker, uh, the Englishman and uh, the American and the uh, Australian, in their first APSA Cape Epic journey, they're leading uh, Signal Racing, which is Rogan Smart and Oliver Munich, in uh, second place in that race. That'll be a, that'll be an interesting uh, tussle there, that's for sure. And now we're back with the the men's race. We have the chasing group, which has now split up. I feel like this is a very crucial point in the race. Scott Schramm, they have to lower the pace a little bit. Um, it looks like Nino Schurter is going back to Andre Fischknecht, making sure that they make, make it through safely. Now, looking back to the uh, Toyota Specialized team, we were speculating whether they had a tire issue, a puncture, but looking at the pictures right now, I have a strong feeling that actually Christopher Blevins, he is suffering today. He's not feeling well. I don't think it's a mechanical on the bikes, I think it's actually on the body. There we go. So that's an interesting uh, observation. It may well be that that is uh, the issue. Um, but Beers is riding ahead of him here, um, just bringing him, bringing him in, just uh, taking him in. They had a long conversation on the on the dual track a little bit earlier, and uh, perhaps that is the issue. We are soon to find out because they're going to be getting to the uh, Spurkfontein uh, water point very, very shortly. And that will reveal uh, so much of what the issue here is. But they are just rolling. They are definitely just rolling. Yeah. They are <laughs> they're trying to do damage control right now. And you can see Matt Beers at the front setting a decent pace. He's not chasing uh, the, uh, the teams up the road. He is really just nursing his partner through at the moment. Well, this is a drama, a plenty in this race because the chase group has splintered as well. It looks like here, Stosek and... Uh, Sievolt as well as uh, uh, Rabensteiner and uh, Alleman up there. But I think that uh, the two men uh, in the Scott Ram team, Schurter and uh, Frischnick, may well have gone up the road. We're not sure. No, I think actually the other way speed, around. speed Company Racing is uh, the leading team yes. up the road. And it's Vilja Pirelli who's doing a great job here chasing them down. Oh. Uh, I believe, I'm not 100% sure. And it looks like... Uh, Kenya North Wave has 
Let's go. They have yeah. an issue. They're not feeling 100%. So there is Speed Company coming back to the group. So their daring do earlier today looks as though it has come back to bite them. And very soon they will be reeled in by William Pirelli, Bart Alleman, and Fabian Rabensteiner and uh, the uh, Canyon Northwave team. Clearly in the men's race, there's been set a blistering pace from the very beginning. And now you can see how the teams are starting to suffer one by one. Uh, albeit at Speed Company Racing made a massive attack and it cost a lot of energy for the other teams. We saw Toyota Specialized had to suffer, slow down a little bit. Also Scott Schramm really feeling it. Actually, it feels like Vilja Pirelli is looking stronger and stronger as this stage uh, unfolds. They are in second place right now, but I have a feeling that we will see them catch this leading team within seconds. Very, very intriguing race that's evolving here today. 98 kilometers and it's a uh, big drama from the off. Fascinating. As yes, we're back with the women and the four riders together here. It is a specialized uh, 91 uh, team as well as the e uh, Seattle Coffee Company pair, and they're all together here. Two of the top three after yesterday's prologue. The missing uh, piece of this uh, puzzle, the triangle, are the uh, pair of uh, Infinity Efficient Insure, and that is uh, Kim the Court and Vera Lossa. Mm -hmm. And Lil and... Uh Wakefield have got a lot to gain from this uh, this cooperation between the uh, leaders between in the CM.com women's category the leaders and uh, and Lil and Wakefield can really cooperate and of course they've got all to gain because they've got that red jersey they have and they can claim that but I think uh, there's no question that L that Lil and uh, Wakefield are after a, a bigger fish to fry here and now the racing gets uh, red hot and then we can see Sophia here pushing in at the front looking back uh, at her partner Katarina Nash as to say like okay now is the time let's go let's put put push the pace and Candice Lil is really impressing me in this race she's looking ever so strong and uh, she looks like she's really good at nursing her her partner Amy Wakefield through yeah they are uh uh, seasoned racers, they have raced before uh, together. Now, uh, uh, let's see if we can uh, have a chat with uh, Isla. Isla Stowe, can you hear us out there? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Fantastic. We can indeed, Isla. What is the uh, scenario? What has what transformed in this, uh, transpired in this women's race? It's been quite a dramatic start. Vera had a crash at about 25 kilometers where she slid off. And then Amy clipped a tree but the tree actually pierced her bicep. So her whole bicep is completely open. Candace was uh, amazing, <laughs> amazingly calm and a great mechanic, got out her tools and has taped it up. And they seem to be looking good over. Pierced her bicep, did you say? Yes, correct. Wow, that sounds uh, so very, very painful indeed. Well, an amazingly gutsy ride from, uh, from the pair of them. No, they're looking good. I think they're trying to definitely put something in the front at the moment and try to get a gap on Vera. They're working hard at the moment. We saw earlier the uh, specialized pair up the road on their own. Um, and was that due to the crash? Was that at the period when, when uh, Amy had a crash? Correct. That was when, after, just after the crash, so they got away on the climb. But they haven't seemed very, they don't seem very aggressive today. They're definitely happy to work and sit behind some people. So they're definitely conserving some energy. Well, fantastic. It's high drama and good to watch. Yeah, you, any idea of how far back uh, Kim Lacourtene and Vera Lossa are? They weren't too far back, like maybe about, uh, my guess is about a minute and a half, two minutes at most. So it's actually quite good racing still. Conditions out there, we've seen a lot of wind uh, out there, Isla. Yes, it's very windy. Um, they're definitely trying to use it to their advantage, but the wind out here is definitely a factor today, and especially with the ladies not having as much support or help, it's definitely going to be a little bit more strategic and tactical. Well, Isla, fantastic. You've got the best seat in the house watching the race unfold there. Enjoy it. 
thanks. I will do. Isla Stowe, who would love to be racing, I might tell you, but uh, for the time being, she uh, is not going to give up an opportunity to sit this close to uh, the uh, best riders in the race, uh, giving each other uh, heaps as they try and uh, rest the jerseys away. Now back with our men's race. Tight, narrow, uh, rough trails they are negotiating as they make their way back to uh, towards uh, Fernkloof and then that final climb. It's very impressive racing by Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill. I mean, having to deal with a pierced muscle is <laughs> sounds like something you don't want to be dealing with in a race. Um, I'm impressed with how calm they, they, they managed. And uh, yeah, now they're here at the very front. It's uh, very impressive racing. And they managed to catch up as well. They've, they've, mm -hmm. put, uh, they've really shown themselves to be uh, the classy riders that they are. And uh, it's a true test of a mountain biker, of course. The, uh, the prologue is a test of form and a test of firepower. And a full longhand stage is a test, really, of, uh, of endurance and, the, uh, and, and firepower, but also the ability to manage any possible mishaps, too. And they've done that extremely well. Well, uh, if Katharina Nash wanted to know about the K Bepic and the racing at the sharp end, she's getting a, a good lesson in it right here on the day one. Uh, as to what it's all about and uh, hanging in there and, and, and uh, being involved at the in the heat of the battle. Definitely. It's good racing here and um, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how it unfolds. It's also interesting to hear that uh, it seems like, uh, according to uh, our e-bike here, that, that actually the, the uh, Sago Specialized team here, they're not riding as aggressively mm. as we thought they might be. So it wasn't an actual attack they kind of just got away because the other teams had issues, issues yeah yeah i think their minds are you know the long term goal like the long -term. yeah it's the alum that's good he's part of the rabbit side of the champion of europe and uh, they are, this is uh, Stosek at the back of this group. Scott Sram are just in front of them. Prishnik and uh, Schurter yeah, and the Stivolt, I think, is in on a good day today. Yeah, the uh, Stivolt's uh, clearly. Some question marks about Stosek. Perhaps he's uh, struggling a little bit with the pace. The pace really early on was, uh, was extremely fierce. Yes. And the pure marathoners uh, may just uh, might have just gone over the limit to stay with that. So he'll be looking to absolutely nurse himself to the finish and try whatever he can to stay in contact with the front group. Ken is little, definitely not afraid of getting on the front and doing the work in this. You know, that's the game. That's that's what it is. But uh, she's certainly up for it, isn't she? Yeah, she's uh, she's up for it. I mean, this last minute uh, pairing, uh, they have everything to win. They have literally nothing to lose and they're going very well today and it's clear that they have their eyes on 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 you know getting into a lead leader jersey will that be the the, the red one the uh, the absa african jersey or i think also they could have their eyes on the the orange uh, cm.com women's leaders jersey well candace has had uh, a very different preparation for this year's event because of uh, the knowledge early on that she wasn't going to be racing the uh, this, this event at that stage. Here we go, back with that uh, chase group. Stosek, and then this, the, the Scots Rampere, and then uh, the European champion, and the Alaman, uh, the German champion is there as well. So they're all intact here, but no, they don't seem to have caught uh, the others. No, no sign of uh, speed coming racing from the from this angle. So I thought I thought I could see, you so know, that the, the, yeah, the, like the, the so gap close. was so close uh, because of the fierce pace uh, set by Virilia Pirelli. But now, well, they're not really in sight. So yeah, we're waiting with excitement for to see the splits to this team who are clearly feeling so good today and just pinning it <laughs> at the very front. Huh? Just, it's almost as if th this is where we are. This is what we look like. Uh, goodbye. And they've gone ag again, it seems. Uh, another big surge from uh, Egger and Baum. It's fantastic racing team. Not, not so fantastic for their rivals, but for the fans, it is a show of note. And it's going to be fascinating to see what that gap is when they hit that 74-kilometer mark. When they get to Spokefontein, all will be revealed as to what kind of impact they've had on the pace. We saw the riders cooperating. They all seem to be cooperating, having lost the yellow jerseys out of that group.
They know they've all got to gain. So now there really are only four teams in the mix for the uh, for the uh, yellow jerseys. It was really close in the um, after the prologue. The first five teams were separated by only one minute and 41 seconds. And if you go down to the top three teams, it's 45 seconds. So Scott's Ram really would inherit that lead if they finished all together in a group. Scott Stram would inherit it. But now we're back to the women's, and uh, the group is uh, established. There's two teams in the front, and that is Lil and Wakefield and the uh, 91 Songo, spe Songo Specialized team. And we just see ha here the leading women teams are catching up um, uh, teams of, of men. Uh, remember, in this race, women have a s uh, completely separate uh, start batch, so they are not starting with any men. So men's teams will be starting uh, ahead of them and behind uh, them, but not at the same time as the, the women's teams. And that's why we will see them catching eventually men's teams every now and then. Of, of course, the men's team will not interfere with the women's racing. You can see that they're heading up to the 60 kilometer mark and uh, it'll be, they've just passed the, uh, they're way past the halfway point and uh, got some big climbing still to go. They've been past the Toyota tough section already and they're climbing up towards the 62 kilometer mark. The time check will be reaching some single track sections soon and there is, you could arguably say there are three major climbs still to go for this leading uh, group. <laughs> I mean, it gives you a, a perspective of just how tough and how far this uh, this route is. Uh, Amanus is a long way away down there, 90 kilometers. You can see, and uh, we still haven't got down to the uh, the ocean there. So that's uh, the, the task that uh, lies in wait for these and the thousands behind them, who set off right the way through to around 8:15 uh, this morning as they left the uh, the start. But uh, Beautiful valley, this, the Himalanada. You might have seen an arrow there on the side of the track, and that uh, is the Himalanada uh, and uh, Hermanus mountain bike trails here. Absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the farms like Bush at Finlinson, uh, Creation, of course, they had a water point there. Newton Johnson, Hamilton Russell, uh, as well as uh, Tolbos. They've, they've been amazing. Spurfontein uh, to let the uh, riders come through here. It's been uh, quite incredible. Look at Amy Wakefield. Uh, the story is just incredible. This uh, young woman is showing just immense determination, courage, uh, and, and fight to, to stay with uh, the, the race here. And considering it was touch and go that she'd even participate, mm -hmm. she'd already lost um, her first initial partner, uh, Irina Luchelschwab, and uh, it was uh, Luchelschwab, in fact, whether coincidentally or not, she also injured her arm and uh, was unable to even fly to South Africa. And the last minute pairing, we've talked about the last minute pairing with Candice Lil, and now she is leading the race. So what a turnaround. Yeah, I mean, Candice, uh, uh, Mariska Strauss from fairly early, I mean, uh, fairly early being um, about perhaps a month, six weeks ahead, well, even perhaps earlier, wasn't going to be racing. Candice didn't do the big pre-epic uh, events like the Atacos and the Tanqua Trek. She, she opted for other things. So it's a very different preparation for her here. It so almost looks as though she's, 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 get a peak on Friday. You know, she's, she's come in here in, in almost prime condition. The thing is, when you start to prepare for one big event six months in, uh, in advance, it's a long time to prepare, but it's also a long time to stay f so focused on just one goal. And sometimes, you know, that can really mess with your mind because you put so much pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you have so much time for the pressure to build up. And, you know, that pressure and that big journey being, you know, cancelled, and then all of a sudden, you know, plan B um, happening. Well, you this you is almost plan C. Yeah, and it seems, <laughs> you know, it's much more as an opportunity and yeah. you feel grateful to be mm -hmm. here. Of course, you know, you're still a racer and you still want to do well. But, you know, I think the, the shoulders are just, you know, lowered a little Relax. bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, plan A was race with Mariska. Plan B was I'm not going to race. And plan C, oh. Here's Amy. Let's race and, uh, and let's, let's have some fun and, and let's, let's lead the race. Yeah, let's let's go and have and uh, I, but the same for Amy. So uh, yeah, fantastic uh, uh, way they've approached the race and they're yeah. on the front right now. Especially you know I think being a South African, of course you know they they wanted to be the one the team can kind of to win the race, and you know for so many years they tried and tried and tried and maybe this could be the year. Well. It may well be. Will it be a year for this pair again? Here they come, flying into uh, the uh, Spurfontein water point. The uh, Orbea 
Liet Speed Company Racing Pal. Look, there's nothing in it. The chase group is on their wheels flying in here. This is going to be a phenomenal finish because there's a big climb to deal with inside the last 10 kilometers. Quick grab of a bottle. Now, what is the scenario with this uh, group? It's Canyon Northwave on the front. Then it is uh, Scott Sram. At least a William Pirelli, one half of, and then Scott Sram. Yeah, it seems like even though uh, Speed Company Racing is pushing it so hard at the front, then I the gap is not growing. I mean, mm. it's it looks like it's relatively stable. Well, Spookfontein, uh, well, this is a uh, 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 this trail is uh, sketchy, dropping very steep drop down into the uh, the gully, the the river here uh, from. Uh, I can Amanda Davis's place at uh, Spookfontein. Thanks to them for uh, allowing uh, the race to come through here. And uh, there they go, yeah. So not much uh, time lost there. Eger and Baum. They brought a dynamic element to the Absa Cape Epic last year. <laughs> They've just, uh, just uh, opened it up again this year. Now, a look at the yellow jerseys here, together with uh, Phil Bass and Alex Miller and... Uh, the rest of uh, the probably third group on the road. And uh, there's Blevins and Beers just slipping further and further back in that, uh, that uh, group. So Indeed, it's clearly a, a problem. Very bad sign that yeah. uh, the riders were scrambling to overtake uh, Blevins and Beers. It's clearly there's something seriously wrong. Although they could still, still save the day. They could save their race. Even if they lose five minutes today, the uh, the margins between uh, between the riders at the end of the week uh, will be significant and uh, today may just uh, may not be that big a deal it is a big deal today because they're losing uh, had time hand over fist but 33 uh, seconds the gap there to that chase group so there we go we confirm that there are still four th three teams chasing one team up the road 30 seconds up the road and uh, these are the four teams that are emerging as the potential podium for the uh, for the line honors Turn to Hermanus, watching very closely to see, uh, wat watching that gap really closely because that gap is not, it's not extending and it's not shrinking. This is a seriously strong uh, group of uh, riders chasing. Nino Schurter, 10-time world champion, of course, and Olympic champion. You've got the uh, 2021 world marathon champion, Andreas Sewald, the German champion. You've got the European marathon champion, Fabian, R Fabian Rabensteiner. Martin Stosek was second to Yaroslav Kulhavi in the Czech marathon championships. That's a quality group chasing this pair. If they can hold that off, uh, what's left of this stage is going to be quite phenomenal. They've still got... Uh, just uh, around about 20 k's maybe um, and uh, perhaps two serious climbs up to Hamilton Russell and then the last one the Ferncliff climb really is going to be the, the I would think the decisive uh, moment in the race and that Ferncliff uh, climb it's a dual track and then it's the top section is single track so the riders if anyone wants to make an attack they'll need to do it a little bit earlier on because there's going to be no passing on the single track section on the fern kloof it's about uh, three kilometers um climb and it's of course it is off the back of a very long a day the gradient isn't terribly steep it drags up to about seven percent is the average it um it, uh, there's a few kickers here and there but uh, it's really going to be at a however long or however steep it is it's still going to be a decisive climb coming into the end that's the R320 on the right-hand side, the uh, tar road that uh, uh, links Caledon with uh, the uh, Himalayan Arda Valley and then down into uh, Onris and uh, Hermanus. So if you know the area, that's where they're going through. Beautiful farmlands on either side here, deciduous fruits. Oopsie, out of the uh, cleat there on the right-hand side for Lickersbaum. But uh, that's where we are. So an, uh, an idea courtesy of our e-bike tracker. And the Bulls Media e-bike uh, give you an idea that straight road, straight up, the, the just on the left-hand side. Again, trails that are existing here. Um, beautiful network of, of trails. Well, we've just got word that uh, through that time check, four and a half minutes back, the Canyon Northwave and Pago Eurosteel have passed through there, but still no sign of the specialized outfit no sign of beers and Blevins just yet. Oops. 
disappointing to see who we've got uh, coming down the trail there as we go back to uh, Egger and Baum in the stormwater drain. Staying off the road. Yeah, this uh, team is riding super well uh, today. It's, uh, it's quite clear that uh, Georg Egger is the one in, th in this pairing definitely feeling the strongest. He's been at the front the whole mm. time doing all the work, but uh, Lucas Baum, his partner, is able to keep up. It's the chase group that might have... Uh, no, no, it wouldn't be. I think it looked like maybe the singer racing yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Just further back uh, on, the, on the route, just an idea of what the terrain is like here. Yeah, it is... Uh, very, very rough. They've uh, gone back uh, just a uh, little bit further left uh, into the uh, into the, the farmer's lands here. Neil, you've got an update on a time uh, for us and a significant one. Well, we're looking at that uh, Spokefontein time check. That was at the 74 kilometer mark. We saw the other riders uh, heading through there and uh, Toyota Specialized 91 are five minutes back. They're five minutes off the pace of Orbea Leard Speed Company and uh, around about four and a half minutes off the uh, chasing group of William Pirelli Factory, Scott Sram and Canyon Northwave. Confirmation of that. Uh, so, real drama here on stage one. Toyota Specialized 91. We're not yet certain of exactly what the issue there. Initially, we thought it might be mechanical, but it has turned out, well, we, we, we're speculating again um, from Annika's experienced eye that it may be that Chris Blevins is, uh, is really suffering. The, the lights went out at some stage. It looked like it, yeah. um, because whenever we saw them, I mean, even though if they had some sort of mechanical on, on, on the bike, they were, you know, they've, they've been through the, the feed zone, the tech zone, they would have been able to, you know, fix whatever was wrong on the bikes. And you can see them now, the whole, the body language is more like, you know, Matt is constantly looking back, like, are let's you here? You are, are, you, are you with me? Are you okay? More than, okay, let's go on the attack. So it's really, really damage control here more than anything. Well, we do have a, a list of the virtual GC leaderboard, so that's if the race were to stop right now. Scott Sram, MTB Racing, uh, would be in the yellow jerseys, but Orbea, Leard Speed Company, they are three seconds off. They do have a 33-second lead on the trails today, and uh, that translates to them being not far off the yellow jerseys. First time almost uh, Lucas Baum goes to the front uh, of this combination to do a bit of work uh, on the front. I mean, they, 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 they're good friends. They've known each other for many, many years, so they know exactly how each rides and probably how each is feeling. And you can see that uh, Ega had that fall earlier today. That hasn't seemed to bother him at all. And uh, quite narrow handlebars looking from, from uh, this. It's quite old school, isn't it, um, Gao Gega? Well, he we caught up with them and... Uh, we got the measuring tape out. Yeah. And they are 700 millimeters. Um, bars are normally, when they come out of the box, they're a little bit wider than that, but they have been cut down. And uh, no doubt, uh, absolutely by the millimeter customized for these riders, the fit is perfect. Class. These are new bikes that they're riding, the 2023 editions, will be always, and it'll be uh, it's an, ex an exciting bike to look at. It's uh, 120 miles of travel, a little bit longer, and cross country bikes have come a long way. We, we used to have. Uh, country bikes were typically 80 millimeters of travel and now they've gone longer the front end is slacker and uh, one thing that we did notice about these bikes in particular is that the uh, the uh, seat angle is a lot steeper so that means that uh, Eger and Baum have had to opt for some setback seat posts in fact uh, Baum's seat post is set back by 35 millimeters for the tech nerds out there that is a huge setback in fact it was a custom seat post developed especially for him by one of their uh, development partners. So, uh, and I, I even believe, you know, that um, you should go online and kind of search for these, uh, these uh, uh, seat posts. The, the it has a little bit of a setback, but the curve makes it uh, flex a little bit just to add a little bit of extra comfort in the seat post itself, in addition to all the other suspension that this bike has, the rear suspension, and also, you know, the, the tires and tire pressure. So there's so many factors on a, on a bike where you can kind of fine-tune uh, just so it uh, fits uh, your liking and but the terrain but no dropper post no i think uh, dropper posts are very personal preference yeah. and if they said we you know what we want dropper seat posts on the bike they would have had it but i think they're so used to hmm. not riding with it um, and then it's uh, it's no issue i mean I always felt like, you know, if I got a bike and kind of, you know, rode that bike and that set up a lot, you know, you, you kind of adapted to that. And you can see every single year 
new stuff is coming out and, and writers has to, you know, adapt and change um, a lot uh, all the time. And sometimes, you know, it makes sense to just kind of stick with, you know, what, you know, works for you. Heading up, this is the sort of penultimate sort of climb uh, of the day up towards Hem Hamilton Russell. And then a very steep uh, descent after this. And uh, that'll take them to the base of the Ferncliff climb, the last of the uh, day's really big climbs. And uh, then they'll be on rotary drive one more time and uh, charging to the finish. Can they hold on? It has been another swashbuckling ride by uh, Gail Geiger and Lucas Baum. They've uh, started off the way they finished a year ago on the marathon stages and uh, carried uh, this form beautifully and uh, sensationally wonderful, thrilling riding to watch. It really is. And uh, can they hold on? Yeah, clearly last year gave them a lot of confidence and, you know, a, a huge belief in what they're capable of. And uh, I like the way that they are doing things. Um, they're relatively young and, and most riders in, in, in their position would, you know, focus a lot on whatever your federation tells you. And, and they would jump into the Olympic cycle and do a lot of uh, cross-country World Cup uh, racing, with which they will be fully capable of. But they've... It seems like they have uh, kind of uh, uh, chosen to, to really focus on, on their thing, you know, being strong in the, in the stage races and really just thriving and loving it. Well, it is the chase group now. And, uh, well, Martin Stosek looks as though he may be suffering there. And there's a ball slightly off the trail. What is going on here with Lucas Baum? But more interestingly, we just saw that the chasers are like breathing right down their necks. Yeah. I mean, they, they are only maybe like 10, 20 meters behind them. And maybe this team is now starting to feel a little bit the pressure, a little bit stressed out about, you know, we're about to be get caught. And that's when it's easy to start making those uh, small mistakes. Yeah, that was a, a, an unusual error from someone as experienced as Lucas Baum. He pulled, it looked like from, from our side, but he pulled his feet out of the pedals to give his legs a bit of a shake, perhaps feeling a bit of cramps. And that uh, took away some of the control that he has. You know, the riders don't just control the bikes with the handlebars. It's, uh, it's about the feet and about, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a combination of that. And uh, he hit a bit of a bump and was thrown off. So uh, no disaster, but it certainly cost him a few seconds. Yeah, it looks a little bit like uh, Lucas Baum is, is starting to, to feel the impact of uh, the high pace. And now oh, we got here we get go. the confirmation that actually the chasers are caught them. Will we see a counter-attack? That is the question here. I think that uh, it looks like um, Andreas Seewald is very keen to get on the pace and to uh, to put them under pressure. He no doubt will have smelt blood. He knows he's German. He might, he might know these riders very well. And he just has to remember that he has his partner at the very back of the group, Martin Stozek. Hasn't looked uh, terribly sprightly, although let's face it, he still is in that front group, the elite group of four teams. So... Uh, rel he's relatively uh, struggling relatively, but uh, it's important to know for uh, Sievold that he can't just jump off the front and make his attack. He does have to wait for uh, Martin Stozek. Well, they're charging down this descent off the Hamilton Russell climb at a uh, high pace on a really rough terrain at the heat of the battle now as we head into the uh, last uh, 12 or so kilometers of the race. They have to be so focused, so on the game here at the uh, speeds uh, they're going and the intensity of the, the race has been executed today. And uh, we've just seen the catch made. So uh, Lucas Baum and Gail Gagas, uh, bold and brave attempt at uh, uh, smashing uh, their way into the yellow jerseys today may have uh, fallen uh, short here. There's still a way to go, but uh, they certainly have uh, given us great entertainment thus far and we still got to get a little bit more. Back with the women's race briefly. And we just caught a glimpse of what we saw when we last uh, checked mm. in with the, the women's uh, leading race, uh, leading team, sorry. Um, and um yeah, let's now just find out a little bit. We were talking about uh, Speed Company and uh, Obia, uh, Leeds Speed Company Racing's bike. Let's uh, check in with it with uh, Neil. <laughs> The 2022 Absa Cape Epic showed us the biggest upset we've ever seen at the race and it was due to none other than George Egger and Lucas Baum. George is going to tell us a little bit about the bike that they're going to be using to take on the 2023 and defend their title. 
So George, tell us about the model you're going to be riding for 2023. Yeah, this year we got a new bike. Obea uh, launched a new uh, OIS. So we are riding still with 120 millimeters in the front and in the back. We already did that last year, so it, which was quite uh, comfortable for us. And it's not a down country bike, it's a real XCO bike. We also do it in XCO racing or ride the same bike in the XCO races. Yeah, so um, for us the perfect choice. So George, the big question, the final question, how much do you think your bike weighs? Yeah, actually, I'm not too much into weight tuning, but uh, and I never weighted it before, actually. So I think with all the back pocket stuff uh, around 10.6 uh, something, 10.5. Yeah, let's try it. Okay, 10.8. But yeah, there's the saddle bag on and it's almost race ready now. So. I think that's quite good. A beautiful machine it is, that uh, Orbea. And I can tell you, yesterday at the end of the prologue, I, I was up at the, uh, the support services uh, compound above the, the village, and uh, there was a one tap in the field, one uh, garden tap open, and uh, a very smart bike being washed next to it. No other bicycles in the whole compound. Lots of cars and trucks and it was one of their bikes. So Gary Wigger's bike being washed there by their mechanic and their camper van was parked there well away. Doing it in typically Maverick style that the way they ride they, this is, uh, they do it differently and uh, uh, just that no hose pipe, no pressure, nothing. Just a, just a, a sponge and, a, and, and the tap. Well, with the stories, the story has been well told is that last year they only had one mm. person in their uh, support staff, and that was Lucas Baum's dad, who did absolutely everything from the race nutrition to the servicing and the cleaning of the bikes and looking after the athletes. And uh, two schools of thought, we spoke about it yesterday. Anikas mentioned that uh, sometimes when there's that level of simplicity, it can be a good thing. Yeah, I mean, of course... Um, if something major happens, you you are a little bit limited um, in in your opportunities because you don't bring like extra everything. But on the other hand, you know, the less staff, the less things you have to relate to. Sometimes, you know, it's that simplicity. You know, keep it simple and yeah, focus on the racing. We just saw a time check there. Three minutes and 38 back were Kim Lacourt and uh, Vera Lossa on this lead group in the women's race. Uh, so at stake there is that uh, Absa African uh, women's leaders jersey and that may well be on the backs of, at this stage, on the backs of uh, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill who are having a storming day here today in the uh, CM.com women's race. And, this, and then that, in it certainly hasn't gone without incident. Uh, Vera Lawza had a crash. We saw uh, some of the pictures earlier on that her number board was, uh, was twisted and, uh, and one of the uh, fastening points had come off. That is obviously playing a role because they've lost uh, over three and a half minutes to the lead team. And uh, Amy Wakefield, in fact, herself had a crash and managed to hurt her arm. So we'll wait to see at the end. And we've just watching going through none other than the five-time winner, the record winner of the race, Christoph Sauser. On his own. So not with his partner, which seems a little bit odd. We'll still get the confirmation whether his partner is uh, ahead or behind, but uh, in a race like this, you want to stick with your partner all the time as much as possible, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely, and so uh, we're further back in the field uh, right now. As these riders make their way uh, over the last little the hills and the climbs of the uh, Overberg region. It is uh, rough and harsh terrain with uh, a buffeting wind to deal with I uh, for think them all. That might have been Justin Chesterton and Kaifa Juring going through there, one of the uh, one of the semi pros that, that are racing, nineteen years old, both of them they're at UCT. They're both studying mechanical engineering and um, it's a uh, it's a, a tall order to be, mm. be studying full time and also to be uh, to, to be racing and to the demands of a race like this. And Annika, you'll be able to tell us what it's like to study and uh, be a professional rider. Yeah, for me, my story is that I started relatively late uh, cycling and uh, mountain biking. I was only 
kind of in my early 20s. And by, by then, I already started my studies uh, as a dentist, to become a dentist. And only then, you know, later on, I got the opportunity to, to actually follow the dream of, of trying to see how far I could take it on the bike. And looking back now, uh, you know, dentistry definitely is not an easy study to kind of combine with professional sports. So, yeah. But it's, it's good to have a plan B for uh, when you're no longer racing. That's, uh, I enjoy that now. 20 k's to go, and Martin Storsek is still hanging on the back of this uh, group. Uh, <laughs> again, this is the team dynamic. Seervolt is clearly the man feeling really strong today in this combination, the Canyon Northway pair. He's been the man who's looked to attack. He's been on the front a few times of that uh, chase group, but Storsek is not quite on the same level today, so it's about managing that combination, staying together, trying to stay with this group, and taking their chances when it gets to the business end. These are certainly an elite group of four teams, and sometimes uh, when you have a bad moment, that's the tactic you have to take, and every rider and every team has a bad moment at some point in the race, and it's about just getting through that, and if he can stay in touch and get just get through that, if he arrives at the finish in a group of four, there's still all to play for. Today is a sprint finish. If the uh, climb up to Fernkluft does not create much of a selection, it'll be very much down to a sprint finish. Because as soon as they hit that top of that uh, tar descent and the rotary drive, it'll be all downhill from there into Hermanus. And I think a team like uh, Scott Schramm, they I think I believe they are quite confident uh, in their sprint. Uh, so they wouldn't be too worried if it were to come down to a sprint finish, but um, I think some of the, the other teams here would like to have this election done before the finish line. Well, this is uh, the drag up towards, uh, from Hamilton Russell up uh, the uh, open road. We saw the uh, lead group coming off that single track uh, a short while ago. But uh, who is going to be... Uh, the team that takes the win here. They tell you what, uh, you've got a feel for Bear Liet uh, Speed Company. They have brought everything to the stage once again and been hunted down uh, towards the end here. Uh, but they cannot be faulted for their effort here. Still in here, but not quite at the uh, sharp end. So clearly the legs are feeling uh, a little bit uh, fatigued after the effort they put in today. And uh, Nino Schurter, well, he is voracious in his appetite for victories, so he is on the front dictating the pace. We saw Lucas Baum just ta taking his feet out of the pedals and shaking his legs. It almost cost him a, cost him a crash, but uh, it's uh, clear that that, uh, that effort out front cost them. And of course, there's the added uh, morale drop when you get, do get caught because all your efforts were in vain. And we all know from uh, previous stages that it does take a lot out of a team when they spend so much time out front and the others can sit back and cooperate and uh, catch up. So that uh, neutralized gap is uh, not going to not, not gonna do anything for their morales, but Nino Schurter seems to always have one of those unburstable morales on the front and pushing hard. But where is his partner, Andre Frischkinecht? Well, interesting. Wout Allmann went across to Nino Schurter and said, I'm here. Um, and uh, he looked over and uh, Fabian Rabenstein had responded and joined him. So the William Pirelli guys are there. And uh, there comes Andre Frischnick just behind uh, Gail Geiger and Lukas Baum out of the saddle uh, alongside him. And here is uh, Sivolt Field just uh, nursing his partner at the back of this group and trying to stay with this group and take their chances when it comes to... Uh, the, the last few kilometers. It's quite clear that the, the pace is relatively high right now, and we can see uh, Villa Pirelli and Scott eager to uh, <coughs> to take advantage of uh, the speed company racing, starting to, to feel it now. So it will be a, an exciting finish here, and we can see some, some, some of the riders are starting to fade a little bit now. Well, exactly, and it's riders from different teams, and that's the that's the gonna be the key thing that'll probably play a big role when we get to the Fernkluft climb is that uh, we've got the team of Orbea Liet Speed Company. Baum seems to be hurting a little bit of the Scott Sram pairing, Andre Frischnecht. He's not shown too much of, of, of signs of struggle, but he, and he is very much hanging there. But Martin Stozek does look like he's struggling. So that leaves Willier Pirelli Factory, Rabensteiner and Allemann. They both look very strong. Let's keep our eyes on them as we... Uh, as just looking at that virtual GC leaderboard, we'll get to that in a minute, but we think that William Pirelli Factory, Ravenstein and Alleman, could be in for a stage win. 
They're definitely looking good today. Um, they're looking like the, the, the best uh, pairing out there. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, all the other teams here, they have... Uh, it's almost like, the, you know, a little bit of... Uh, within the team, one rider is feeling a little bit stronger than the other. And it's actually, remember, this is a team's race. And it's the combined forces of the team that will decide how well you go. Well, it's boiling up uh, beautifully now, isn't it, uh, to uh, a fantastic uh, finish, Stosek. Well, it's one of those days for him. Yeah, and it, it's almost certain at this point that we will see a swap in the GC. We will definitely see a new team in, in, the, in the yellow jerseys after today. Well, this could be the moment. There is mm. a very ominous back a gap back to Stosek. He's just not keeping that gap. To yeah. uh, it's a bit of a yeah, it's a bit dangerous. It doesn't yeah. look doesn't look good. And and you can see the front group there just opened it up a fraction, just a little bit more. And uh, Sievold said, uh, "We're going with it." And uh, he's looked over his shoulder to try and bring uh, Stosek up. He's back with them now. My word, he's emptying his tank to stay with this group. He is, and he's certainly taking advantage of those corners. Sometimes with a, a group of eight riders like this, when the uh, when the front end of it reaches a corner, there'll be a bit of a slowdown. Mm. There's a bit of a concertina effect, uh, an expansion of the concertina, and that gives the rider who's struggling just a little bit of an opportunity to get back on and survive mm. another few meters. And I think that's really what uh, Canyon Northway will aim to do, is they just want to survive as long as possible. And uh, perhaps they'll lose a bit of time at the end and fight to live another day, but nothing compared to what we saw on that virtual GC leaderboard with the uh, the Specialized, the Toyota Specialized 91 team losing well over five minutes. They are definitely out of the picture for the stage and certainly out of the top four when it comes to the GC. So they'll need to uh, consolidate at the end of the day and see what they can do for the rest of the week. Definitely. And you know, it's never over until <laughs> the very last finish line. We keep saying that, but it, it, is, uh, it is so true. Last year we also saw Matt Beers have a bad day, but recovering from mm. that uh, and still being able to be really fast and going really well after that. So, yeah, maybe Chris Bredevins is having a little bit of an off day, but that doesn't mean that he's he's uh, out of the picture for the rest of the race. Interesting here, uh, e-bike at Thomas Ditch going ahead of uh, Storsek here. So uh, th that's a, a, a bit of a psychological thing as well. Um, now know that the e-bike is wanting to focus on the leaders and you're not uh, with the leaders you've got another back behind you and it's not a, a cyclist not your teammate and he's starting to lose lose ground here well this is the moment this is the time that he's going to be losing ground there no more don't look like there are any more of those sharp corners where he can just uh, close that gap and Sievert will need to drop back quite soon just to nurse his partner through the rest of the stage and over that last climb fern kloof and of course back down to Hermanus. We'll be getting a good idea of what the, what we're not really looking too much at the time gaps anymore because it's very clear that uh, the uh, yellow jerseys of, um, of Toyota Specialized 91 have lost it on the day and it'll be up to these four teams. But uh, Stozek is absolutely fighting his way. He's not giving up at all. He sees a bit of a lull on the pace and an opportunity to get back on, not going into his, not going too far into his limit making sure that he has something left for that final climb. Rabensteiner and Alleman are a pair that we've got to uh, think about today because they're in good form. They won the Andalusia. They won the, the Swiss Epic uh, last year. He's the European champion. They're clearly in some really, really good shape. And they've, they've looked uh, very comfortable in this, this chase group um, all the way through. So they are, are very much factors in this race uh, for the stage win. And most importantly, because they're very, th it seems like out of these teams here, that they are the team that is uh, the best match. Mm. I mean, they have the less uh, difference uh, between the strengths uh, of the two of them. Whereas all the other teams here, they seem to have a little bit of a weaker partner. And that, that, is, uh, that is a weak link, uh, so to speak. Stosek uh, is uh, that man in this uh, Canyon Northwave team at the moment and, uh, well, just doing all he can to keep them uh, just in sight. And Andre Frischnecht is the man just ahead of him. And uh, that is uh, a telling sight as well because Nino Schert is the man who's been dictating the pace of the front of this group and his partner now is four or five riders further back. Uh, that could be a, a, an issue for the uh, Scott Sram team. And a bit of a relief for the Canyon Northwave mm. team. They know that at least one other team is struggling just as much. 
But uh, we did mention Willier Pirelli and uh, that even match is going to be really important when they get to that Fernkluf climb, that selective last obstacle before they head into Hermanus. Yeah, I have a feeling that uh, on the Fernkluf climb, what we could see is two strong teams going up there together and that could be speed company with the Willia Pirelli. Uh, it's going to be very exciting to see how it all unfolds uh, on that climb. Well, they've had plenty of uh, single track uh, to ride today on uh, a really rough and tumble first big marathon stage of uh, this year's APSA Cape Epic, the 19th edition of the race that measures all. In the words of the great Bart Brenchens, it is the Tour de France of mountain biking with a slight twist because uh, uh, not anyone can go and ride the Tour de France. This is uh, has its uniqueness in... Uh, the opportunity for amateurs to go and ride exactly what the pros are riding in exactly the same conditions on uh, exactly the same time. So it uh, really is uh, like very, very few other sports events of its kind. Um, even in a golf program, sometimes the amateurs tee off of it from a different uh, uh, tee box. This is uh, no, no, no difference here. In fact, those amateurs spending uh, many, many more hours out uh, in uh, these uh, conditions than, uh, than the pros. Yeah, all credit to them and uh, also all credit to Martin Stozek who's clearly been suffering hugely but he has absolutely not given up. He is emptying himself to stay with this group. They are on the Fernkluf climb and they'll be nearing the top quite soon. They've passed the 82 kilometer mark um, already. In fact, a short while ago they passed that mark. You'll be able to keep an eye on the live timing and get some split times live on the app. So get the app. It's the Epic Series app you'll be able to follow the race and also catch a, get an idea of the entire epic series and the opportunity to race the world in iconic regions of mountain biking four islands in croatia and the andorian epic in the pyrenees and of course the venerable spa swiss epic in the beautiful alps of switzerland yeah, Stosek uh, hanging in and showing that uh, determination and uh, focus to just uh, make sure he stays within uh, touching distance. Have to reach a bit to touch uh, the rider ahead of him, but he's there and thereabouts. We saw a bit of a glimpse of the of the wind and uh, the really we look at the bushes that are moving. And we had some reports from the weather station on the top of Rotary Drive. The winds have been recorded up to 90 kilometers an hour make a big you have a big influence on the race we see here that Andre Frischnick is just dropping back just off the pace a little bit Nino Schurter will need to get off the front if he is it's hard to see exactly who which riders are on the front but Nino Schurter will need to get back and nurse him as will uh, Andreas Seervold it almost looks like it could be the Villa Peretti team mm. at the front right now it's uh, some very interesting dynamics going on here because if you have a if you're in a team with a rider that is suffering at the back it especially here on these single tracks it makes sense for the other one the stronger one to go to the front and kind of you know almost like block the way for any team trying to to benefit of that and trying to go on the attack fascinating uh, scenario unfolding uh, on this stage as the uh, Last few kilometers about to bring some uh, real dramas. Frischnecht and Stosek at the back of this group. They're on to the top of the climb and they'll look down over Walker Bay on the left hand side and uh, scurry along this trail that is uh, one that they uh, they'll soon reach a section that they rode out on this morning and then down Rotary Drive. So, Vart Alleman. Nino Schurter, it looked like, or was that Rabenstein? I'm not sure. And that was Schurter, I think, there. So it is uh, broken up a bit here. Eger and Baum are still uh, still together as a, as a team here. So uh, maybe they still will have uh, a say in the uh, stage win later today. It could be that they changed their tactics uh, once it all came back together. So from being on the attack and trying to, to, to go solo to the finish line, maybe when they sensed, okay, we're about to get caught, they would swap tactics. Uh, take it a little bit easier and maybe, you know, rely on their sprint for an eventual sprint finish. Look at this wind. They are now very exposed on the top of the ridge that overlooks uh, Hermanus here. Yeah, and uh, that wind is just pounding the riders from uh, the right-hand side. 
And everyone's, everyone is pretty much in visual touch. We can see the Bulls Media e-bikes there on the back there with their big backpacks, and that is uh, for the, to broadcast and beam those signals from the e-bikes back to us. But all eyes on Marcus Dozak. He is in the back, and he's following Andre Frischnecht. His partner Nino Schurter is paying very close attention to Nino Schurter's credit. He's looking after Andre Frischnecht very well. That is, uh, does leave opportunities for Speed Company Racing to uh, yeah. to spot that weakness and to put the pressure down. And this William is a very good uh, spot to go in the attack and uh, apply some pressure because it looks like the wind is coming from the side and that means drafting is very difficult uh, in these conditions. So it's like on the road when you have the crosswind, you can uh, you can use it to your advantage and pressure. And you can see how the riders are riding almost not necessarily to a brace, but they're riding um, or they're protecting uh, each other the stronger rider is protecting the the weaker rider with a kind of an echelon style. So if the wind is coming from the side, the rider slightly behind is getting some protection from the wind. It's not the direct behind protection that you would get from normal conditions. But we've said er already that the winds are reaching up to 90 k's an hour, and they're coming pretty much from their uh, from you could say from orientation from the rider from around about two o'clock. You could say. Well, they are powering along this dirt road, and look at Nino Schurte. He's gone back. He's uh, Brought Andre Frischneck back into the uh, mix here. Rabensteiner now is t has dropped back uh, off the back. We saw Wout Allemann briefly in the front there as well. So Stasek here with Rabensteiner in the front. And uh, so that's three of the teams have had uh, riders uh, in trouble on this last bit of uh, trail. And now uh, Gail Geger and Lucas Baum, they have very little has separated them at any stage in, uh, on today's stage. What uh, fascinating is going up ahead. Uh, that picture was frozen, but it looked like one of the Scott Tram men had gone up ahead there. There's a that fast descent to come down the tar road, and in a flash, they'll be back into this finish line here at uh, Hermanus, which is bathed in sunlight and an expectant crowd awaiting the arrival of the uh, race uh, leaders. Here we go. So, Scott Tram on the front. I believe yeah. it's uh, Nino Schurter who's yeah. really pushing the pace on the front, and making sure, yeah, really using this crosswind to their advantage here. And Alleman looks like he's on really good mm. form. He is looking very sprightly, but he will have to, of course, wait for his uh, partner, uh, Fabian Rabensteiner, and refreshing it in the f in right in the middle of the picture right now. And Lucas Baum is, uh, was that Lucas Baum or was it George Egger that uh, looked back to? Uh, to drop back. Certainly, Nino Schurter looks back and can see that uh, he has Andre very close at hand, and Lucas Baum is back on, back in touch mm. with these uh, these these two teams. It was fascinating. Baum was hugging the right side of the road, and uh, Frischnick and uh, Alleman was sitting in his in the cover, and he was looking around for his partner, and eventually had to drop back a bit, and he's come around the other side to try and find some shelter. Now, Ravensteiner has got back the European champions jersey of. Uh, uh, the Ravensteiner, he's the marathon uh, European champion. And uh, well, now it looks like Gail Geger is starting to suffer. The man who had the fall earlier, who's dictated the pace for much of the day for Obia Liet uh, Speed Company. He's the man rolling back towards uh, Andrea Sivalt and Martin Stosek, the Canon Northwave team at the back here. Fascinating racing. Wow. The wind here is, is really defining this uh, finale today. It's uh, good to see. Actually, I thought Speed Company Racing would be the one with really a Pirelli, but now it's actually Scott Schramm who can follow their pace. They've gone. They've gone over the top of that uh, hill. Now it's the descent to come. Uh, Sivald looks as though he's going to join his fellow Germans up ahead, bringing uh, his Czech partner with him. But up the road, Speed Co at least uh, Scott Schramm and William Pirelli look as though they've gone. Yeah, they are. So question is, will they work together or mm. will will it start to get tactical between these two teams, uh, allowing for Canyon North Wave and Speed Company Racing to get back? Interesting. Alleman sitting in the cover of uh, provided by uh, Schurter. Frischnick uh, just uh, to the left of Alleman and uh, Ravenstein a little bit exposed, but trying to get tucked in uh, alongside Andre Frischnick. Well, Schurter's clearly feeling the strongest mm. on the out of this group. And he has two things to gain from this a possible stage win and keeping the uh, so-called sprint finish at the end a little bit simpler when there's only two teams involved. 
but the most another really important agenda is the overall because if he can keep uh, put a little bit of time between the uh, Scott's Ram team and Orbia Leard Speed Company there is already uh, about a 38 second gap and uh, with uh, Speed Company racing just <laughs> just falling off a little bit that gap will grow so every second counts especially this early in the race it's a bit of a morale boost uh, not necessarily a huge amount in the big picture of things when it comes to the end of the week. But uh, it's, if anything, a moral victory and certainly just a few seconds can never harm. No. And you can see it was quite clear that uh, Nino Schroeder didn't mind at all to provide uh, mm. shelter and do all the work for Villa Pirelli. So definitely he has, uh, Schroeder has his eyes, uh, I think, more on Toyota Specialized and Speed Company racing to put in as much time into these teams. You can see how evenly matched this pairing is. We saw Lucas Baum was struggling a little bit earlier and uh, he was actually having to shake his legs out. And George Egger clearly just uh, nursing him through that. And now the roles look like they've been reversed. That's one of the fascinating things about this, uh, this race. Eight days is a long time and you will have ups and downs. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of how you manage this. Well, they're in the uh, aero tuck coming down the rotary drive here. A uh, position that... Uh, is not allowed uh, on the road in uh, road racing and uh, but they are tucked in real low look how high that saddle is on the, the back there they are going at extreme speeds trying to make up uh, ground on the uh, the men ahead of them now it looks like quite a distance but in fact it's about 10 seconds separating uh, scott's ram and william Pirelli factory they together 10 seconds back to orbia leard speed company and a further 10 seconds back Canyon Northwave. Canyon Northwave are 20 seconds off the lead group, losing a further 20 seconds of f further time to uh, Scott's Ram. So when it comes to the overall GC, it's, they wouldn't they, they won't be happy about losing time, but there's still a descent to come, and they can perhaps take some big risks to try and minimise that gap. But uh, it's clear that Nino Schurter and Andre Frischknecht have got their ears pinned back. And even if they're just going for a GC, a, a GC victory today or a GC, uh, a GC uh, you could say, um, an agenda, their agenda is for GC, it uh, does play into the hands of William Pirelli Factory, who have a possible stage win. And meanwhile, we can see the, the Toyota Sango Specialized here uh, really, really suffering big time. And it's clear that Chris Brevens is not feeling it today. And luckily, they're still in the race because anything can happen. They just have to make it through today and recover for tomorrow. We saw last year with Matt Beers having stomach trouble. Uh, he was uh, absolutely in a terrible way when he came back to the finish. And uh, Lawrenceford and uh, still managed to rescue the stage race. They still managed third overall at the end, even after a disastrous day one. So back onto the uh, trail that... Uh, Runs alongside the uh, road, that uh, the main road into uh, Hermanus. They would have come out on this, and now they're heading back on this trail. Nothing to choose between these two teams. Scott Sram, MTB, William Pirelli, dicing it out. And the question is, who will be the better sprinter? It's all about the sprint and positioning going into to the venue and the sprint. Uh, how you position yourself uh, into those final corners, that will be absolutely key. And we've seen some various tactics over the years for a sprint finish and no doubt these two teams will have watched and known they'll know what works we've seen in the past when the bulls stefan Stam, we've seen him make a uh, breakaway in the last kilometer heading up the road knowing that he might perhaps he admitted himself might not be the strongest sprinter of between him and carl platt and uh, of course that just left carl platt to have to fight it out against the other team's second place rider because it is the second team member to cross the line that's when the time is taken Egger and Baum 11 seconds uh, back as they uh, chase they have made much of the racing much of the drama today around this pair and then Andreas Silvalt and Martin Storsek are further nine seconds back so they 20 seconds uh, off the pace here we seeing change here on stage one the yellow jerseys have exploded they are way way back over five and a half minutes when last we checked so there is going to be a, a new uh, yellow jersey wearer today and certainly a swing of fortunes we saw the aggressive pairing of uh albeer Liet speed company and uh that has swung they were caught the break was neutralized and uh now we have absolutely storming william pirelli and scott sram 
Oh, high drama as they close in. Are they going to close the gap and bring more drama? Is there a, a late little twist here as uh, Lucas Baum now is the man doing the work, having uh, had his teammate uh, set the pace early on in the most of the stage on the tar roads. Now Baum emptying his tank to try and get across and uh, Egger clearly suffering. He had a fall earlier today and he's uh, worked so hard. They are just, just out of reach. You can see here the top, the two leading teams on the, the stage today, uh, really looking after each other and also looking back to speed company racing. They would love a sprint finish without having to deal with them. That's for sure. Look at Alleman on the front, really driving the pace. He has been super strong today. And Ravensteiner, we've se not seen much weakness from him. Andre Frischknecht, uh, occasionally a couple of chinks in the armor, but uh, Nino Schurter clearly really motivated to stay with Alleman right now. And Ravensteiner just moving ahead. This could be a tactical move by Ravensteiner. And Andre Frischknecht really needs to stay in touch with these three riders. There he is. Just not letting any gap, but uh, we saw some looking around earlier from the, from the riders. They'll be looking very closely to see where Baum and Egger are. And uh, if they get back in touch, then the uh, tactics will change. There will be a bit of a neutralization. And we do also have uh, the Canyon Northwave team who were 20 seconds back at that time check. That the last thing that any of these three teams want. They know there are three teams up the road or three teams in the mix for a sprint finish. The podium is guaranteed, but when there's four, it just puts a bit of extra pressure on things. Well, they'll swing off the road now and then uh, a little section of uh, dirt, but this pair are so close, so close. So there's no way those uh, two teams up front can, uh, can tarry too much. They cannot uh, uh, play any uh, tactical cat and mouse games. This pair are on their wheels. They'll be taking advantage of any slowing down up ahead, that's for sure. There's still visual, they still have mm. a chance to see the uh, team up front, which uh, can be uh, motivating, but also quite frustrating because they'll know that they're already on the limit. And if they just can't quite close the gap, it does, um, does nothing for the morale. Mm -mm. Also because it looks like here Scott Schramm and Ville Pirelli, they are more in interested in putting time into speed company yeah. racing than, than racing uh, tactically against each other here. So yeah, uh, all, all focus on, on gabbing or putting in as much time on a BND uh, speed company racing as possible. And the dynamic in the, t in the group at the front is that Nino Schota knows he would be the strongest sprinter. He knows that he won't have any trouble beating perhaps Ravensteiner. So he knows he can afford just a little bit of extra energy. And oh, there's a bit of a coming together. They've got some narrow sections of the trail to navigate. And this could play a role when there's four riders. It's a little bit trickier. We saw from the, uh, from the uh, concertina effect that could play a role. And Speed Company Racing will be going full gas. They will not miss a single beat when it comes to any of these uh, obstacles. It's oh. still all to play for, just a matter of seconds. Yeah, it is. And uh, remember, just uh, for a, a sprint finish, and the finish is the second rider across the line that uh, that counts. So um, when they chase the, uh, the pump track on the right-hand side here uh, in Hermanus above the uh, showgrounds and the high school, that's how close we are to uh, the finish of this monumental stage shot one. It has delivered incredible drama and it's not over yet. Snaking through this last bit of uh, single track and uh, the field on the right hand side is the Astro Turf Farky pitch and they'll go around that and then drop down onto the road before entering the uh, playing fields of Hermanus High School and deciding the stage. And what a view from the Bulls Media e-bike to see what it's like to be dicing with uh, the world's best coming into a sprint finish. Pick a line here as they snake through the uh, the trees. It is again, Frischneck looks over his shoulder under a bit of pressure. Schurter and Frischneck now are second team on the road. They will turn into the finish very, very short. Away goes William Pirelli. Wout Alleman has been a strong man today and he's got Fabian Ravensteiner with him. He turns into the road towards the school here. Schurter and uh, Frischneck giving chase for all they're worth behind them. It is Egger and Baum also, but is Wout Alleman looking to finish uh, this up with a second stage when Fabian Ravensteiner alongside him, the European champion. It is William Pirelli who takes stage one at the Absa Cape Epic in 2020.
33 just ahead of Scott Stram MTB. What a race, what a dramatic uh, couple of hours of racing we've seen here as uh, the uh, pair of Gail Geiger and Lucas Baum are into the playing field. They'll take third. They have delivered such a dramatic day here. They played a major role in what has been a fantastic stage Beach one. And Nina Schurter and Andre Frischnick did exactly what they needed to do. They didn't necessarily have to win the stage. They did have to gain time on Orbi Elliott Speed Company. So they might have spent a bit of extra energy leaving Ravensteiner and Alleman. Alleman leading the, uh, the group out for the sprint and Ravensteiner just uh, perfectly positioned on his wheel. And uh, thanks to the Bulls Media e-bikes, we got a perfect view of that all folding out. Absolutely. Uh, there we go. Thomas Ditch again, as he always has, supporting uh, his uh, man uh, up front, Stefan Sahn. But what a race. Uh, we saw Martin Stosek and Andreas Seewald crossing the line in uh, fourth place for Canyon North Wave. And uh, the big story today is the implosion of uh, the race leaders, Matt Beers and Chris Blevins, who will be making their way in uh, a long way down by comparison to the leaders today. What, what a, a finish. Hey, what a finish. What, what a, a race. Yeah. So Canyon North Wave losing uh, 15 or 13, 13 seconds to Orbia. And um, but definitely Scott Sram are on the money when it comes to the GC. They are. They will be uh, in the uh, race leaders uh, Chivita yellow jerseys today. Scott Sram and... Uh, Nino Schurter and his partner, Andrew Frischnit, a very, very cagey, clever piece of racing uh, by uh, them. And, uh, well, Bart Allemann in great shape today. Uh, Fabian Rappensteiner wasn't far. I mean, he was, he, was, he, was, he was not short of him at all, but it was clear that Allemann is a, is a man in some rich form at the moment. We did say it early on, this, that they look like the most matched pair, the most evenly matched pair, and they, were, they rode really cleverly. They didn't expend too much energy we saw Speed Company, we saw um, Orbia Lee at Speed Company Racing. We were absolutely storming, and uh, the results show that it was too early. It may have paid off, it may not. The winner it is always right, is what they say. It's the way they race. Another look at uh, the uh, finish here. William Pirelli taking the uh, stage win, a third stage win for Fabian Rabenstein, a second for Vart Allemann, and uh, a great celebration by uh, the Italian and Belgian combination. And I think any rider in the world will want to have a picture of themselves in a sprint finish with Nino Schota behind them. <laughs> that doesn't happen often, does it? Uh, the uh, greatest of all time. So, Hermanus awaits uh, the remainder of the elite field and, of course, our women's race, which is unfolding in uh, equally uh, fascinating uh, fashion with the, the race leaders in the CM.com uh, orange jersey. Sophia Filipan Gomez and her partner Katrina Nash, uh, together with uh, Candice Lill and Amy Wakefield of uh, e4.net uh, Seattle Coffee Company, dicing it out. There is Nino Schurter. Well, when he's sitting down, you know he's uh, emptied the tank today. He knows no other way. 98 kilometers and two and a half thousand meters of climbing. It's <laughs> definitely <laughs> taken its toll. And all credit to Andre Frischenek, who really has stepped into those shoes we've said it so many times but uh, he really deserves uh, deserves a recognition for that because it's no easy task the pressure of riding with the greatest of all time is, uh, is something that could affect uh, any lesser rider but uh, clearly he is up to the task this year great day here for uh, the uh, leaders in the absa african jersey i think that might be them uh, phil base and alex miller of uh, Paige Eurostil have uh, might find their way up uh, quite nicely. They may be finishing in uh, sixth place today. So uh, let's go down to the finish and hear from uh, Andre Frischnick and Nino Schurter. Okay, so we're here with uh, Nino Andre after stage one. Uh, there must be a huge relief after after last year's shenanigans. Yeah, it was, a, it was an awesome stage. Went really well. Um, yeah, it was a tough, tough pace from the beginning. It was flat out, and uh, yeah, I think we managed to not going too much into the red, always going a bit our pace. And in the end, we saw our opportunity, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was great racing. And to cross the line, uh, a podium on stage one, um, that must be, you must be pretty happy about that. Yeah, for sure, the podium is nice, but also the overall 
Uh, we took over yellow now. Uh, that's pretty pretty cool. And uh, yeah, also our it's also good release to know how our setup works. Uh, we work well together. Uh, it was a good first uh, first test. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say, I mean, with uh, given uh, your first epic together. Um, you must be. Uh, you must have a good, uh, a good feeling for the rest of the teams as well. What are the intentions out there? Do you think this year? Yeah, it's uh, it's tough racing from the beginning, and uh, for sure we are here to to give our best and uh, try to win this race. But yeah, it's an unpredictable race, and uh, we we will do our best every day and hopefully end up uh, at the top in the end. And what are the excitement levels uh, coming into this year? Yeah, really, uh, Cape Epic is always exciting. Uh, it's a big adventure. And uh, I really love this race, and uh, it's, it's nice when you can start like this. It's, uh, it's a good, good, good vibe already. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks a lot. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, man, who loves this uh, race, and uh, there's no shortage of desire to win it for a third time from uh, Nino Schurter. Uh, he's uh, certainly a man who loves winning and uh, came out here in his initial years and uh, just rode the race as part of his preparation for the World Cup scene. But uh, once he set his mind to uh, winning it, he won it. And uh, Matthias Sternemann and uh, then uh, Lars Foster, his uh, two previous uh, winning partners, and now Henri Frischner, who rode and supported him. And there come the Bulls uh, rolling in and uh, B.H. Coloma rolling in just behind them. Serrano and uh, Rodriguez. It's a little bit uh, of a surprise in that the, their position uh, so far, six and a half minutes down. And uh, just I mentioned that the Paga Eurosteel, the Af South African jerseys, they now did finish sixth place, so five minutes and 50 seconds down. Have it enjoyed a good day? Fantastic day for them, and uh, a based on experienced campaigner, and he, in fact, also has uh, partnered up with uh, Nino Schurter and won stages with him. So it's uh, really credit to him and uh, the rising star, Alex Miller, who uh, no doubt Philip is mentoring. And we're going to be watching them closely. Yeah, Sixth let's place, very, yeah. Good, very good performance from them. And let's go back down to the finish line. Okay, we're here with Philip Alexander from Paga Eurosteel, wearing the African leaders jersey. Uh, Philip, just sum that up, stage one, it's always a big one, isn't it? How is, how is this stage one? Yeah, the first uh, bit was uh, yeah, uh, a bit of a rush. Um, you know, we headed straight into some trails and uh, uh, yeah, quite a climb, but uh, yeah, our plan was to uh, yeah, sort of stay at the front in the beginning and then when it's all settled, sort of tap off a bit. and. Uh, I think we managed it well. At the end, yeah, we started going a little bit harder, um, but I think it was a good day. We didn't spend uh, too much out there. And um, and how's this uh, how's this course comparing co to previous years? Um, and what's what's the tempo like this year? Um, yeah, it's it's a fast tempo at, up front. I think the you know the uh, top five teams this morning uh, we weren't there. Uh, we just stepped off and sort of hanged about two minutes behind them. But uh, it was a quick pace. Um, but it's always you know the first two three stages are are really quick, um, and then it sort of tapers off a bit later. Um, so you want to be fresh later. But uh, yeah, I don't know what was the last time we were here in Armonas, but I remember some of the trails from from previous years. And uh, yeah, it's always a tough one out here. And yeah, the wind was just brutal. Uh, yeah, at the far end of, of the course as well. And Alexander, for you, um, just yeah, what's it been like at the, the sharp end of the race and to maintain the, the African leaders jersey as well today? No, maintaining the African leaders jersey, of course, is a big privilege. Um, like Phil said, we just had to uh, yeah stay in the front during the during the first few kilometres and then um, just try to ride a consistent pace. I mean, it's still a, a lot of days ahead, so I think I also try to not go too deep and not uh, go with too many surges, just ride a constant pace. Um, I, think I, I think I managed that well and um, yeah, I think I was, yeah, I felt good, good towards the end, so hopefully it'll be the same tomorrow. And uh, what's the feeling and the balance between the two of you and uh, what have you got planned for the rest of the race? What are the aspirations? No, I think we complement each other quite well. I think we have similar strengths and similar weaknesses. We kind of know, we kind of have like a silent relationship where you know how the other one is feeling, so you can gauge by his body language and everything. So I think it works well together. Um, I think, yeah, tomorrow and the next day we'll still to ride conservatively and then uh, maybe see what we can do in the last, last, uh, last half of the race. 
Great. Congratulations, guys. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Um, South African uh, Jersey leaders, uh, Alex Miller from Namibia. He's the Namibian cross country and marathon champion. He's uh, a young man of 23 and he's already been to the Olympic Games. A real talent uh, and he's riding alongside South Africa's uh, Philip Bass, who's been at the sharp end of marathon and cross country racing in this country for over a decade. Uh, Philip uh, thinned out the Paige Eurostil team on the retirement of Matthijs Bierkus a couple of years ago and uh, has brought in a young man who many feel has the ability and the strength to become uh, a serious contender uh, in years to come. Like at least uh, insect science uh, roll across the line. Keegan Bontekun and Arno Dutoy. We caught a glimpse a short while ago whilst that interview was going on of the, the uh, race leaders, the erstwhile race leaders, Toyota specialised in 91 Matthew Beers and Chris Blevins rolling in, uh, Neil, over eight minutes down. And here we see the pairing of uh, Lachlan Morton and uh, ah. Keegan Swenson. Uh, yeah, here for the first time together. I uh, think they have both done the race uh, mm. on previous uh, occasions, but this is the first time that they, they pair up. Yeah, Lachlan was meant to ride with Alex Harzang the first year when it uh, got cancelled uh, due to the COVID pandemic and uh, then came back with Kenneth Karaya. And Keegan Swenson rode with Maxi Marot uh, last year. But uh, a team that, uh, yeah, they'll, it'll be interesting to see how they go. And uh, they, they didn't uh, disappoint yesterday. They were, they were up there in the uh, top 15, I think. Yeah, they're in 14th, correct. Yeah. Mm. And they look for another f uh, top, uh, right about the top 15 area because uh, they have 15 teams have come in already. So they just have to dive in and... Uh, Hopefully they'll uh, come in under the in the top 20 and they'll be able to maintain that top 20 position overall. And uh, exciting to know. Uh, really, will be we've got down on the line. We have uh, Speed Company Racing. I think we're going to be having a chat to them to see how things went. Okay, so we're here with uh, Georg and Lucas, defending champions. Um, they've had a fresh awakening to the uh, to the Cape Epic 2023. Uh, Georg, just tell us through some of the uh, some of the incidents that you've been up against today. Yeah, I mean, uh, I felt uh, pretty good from the beginning on, and I, I saw that Lucas can can follow, um, and then I decided to to let the others like um, suffer a bit. We always try to open a little gap so that the others can pro uh, pro profit from our slipstream. And that worked out uh, pretty well. We knew that it's a bit risky, but um, I had a feeling like I never went too much in, uh, or too deep. So yeah, it worked out well. In the end, I had also a bit of cramps. Lucas had a bit of cramps um, like 20 or 25 Ks to go, and I was cramping in the really end. So we could not finish for uh, fight for the first spot, but still OK. And yeah, overall, you pretty fairly happy with crossing the line in that position? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the gaps are still close, and that's uh, what's the most important. And Lucas, for you, um, uh, how, how, yeah, how deep did you go today? And uh, was this a fresher awakening to the to the Cape Epic, or was this something that you're completely ready for? Fuck, uh, I was I was trying to hide between uh, behind Georg as much as possible. It was so windy, so fast from the beginning. Uh, I feel that I, yeah, in, I was in the red zone the the whole, the whole day, and the, the cramps started pretty early. Um, towards the end, I could hold a good pace, but that when uh, when Georg had to pay pay tribute to his effort for three hours, uh, I was I was riding on the train of Georg today. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't manage to hold the gap over the last the last climb. Maybe then we would have uh, had a chance to to come over the top alone and, and yeah maybe save it to the finish. But uh, yeah, maybe it's a tr tradition in the Cape Epic to have the toughest stage in the, in the first day. But last year we had to suffer uh, uh, like dogs too, uh, and today was the same. And um, and uh, to come back as defending champions, just in amongst the pack, you, is there any different feeling in, amongst what's going on? Ah uh, well, um, no. Maybe that's also the, the nice thing about racing. You're only as good as uh, as the race yesterday. Uh, and last year's Cape Epic is, is one year ago, so. Um, the, the cards of decks are freshly shuffled. How does, I don't know if, if that's a, the uh, right tran like translation, but um, yeah, uh, except the, the number one in front and, and on our back, uh, there's there's nothing from from last year. Uh, year. And Georg, it looks like you've been doing a little bit of a strip tease here for us on the sides. Um, what what just what happened was one of those African bushes jumped out. He only wants to show off his titles. That's the strategy as <laughs> well. No. Um, 
I had like uh, I got grabbed by a bus one time and also had a crash on the other side. So I had everything today. Uh, probably, ho hopefully, there's nothing more to come the next days. So we we did, did everything today. Hugo had a mi little mechanical, and now we're fine to go. Yeah, we don't have to struggle anymore. <laughs> Perfect. Good luck, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Greetings for all the spectators at home. I got so yeah. many messages. Love you. Greetings to Nora. <laughs> to my daughter. It's Paloma. Oh, there really are uh, a real energy uh, to this uh, event. Uh, uh, Lucas Baum and Georg Eger, they brought the racing today, that's for sure. So, Ravenstein and Allemann uh, take the stage when 4 hours, 1 minute and 44, 2 seconds ahead of Schurt and Fischnick, 21 seconds clear of Egger and Baum. Sievold and Stosek just off the podium uh, for Cannon Northwave, 34 seconds, just uh, over half a minute between the top four after 98 kilometers of racing. This is some quality we've got this year in the, uh, at the sharp end. Uber and Schneller in eighth place, uh, Serrano and uh, Rodriguez in ninth and Lakata and Rodil Cortina of the Bulls Mavericks. Alban Lakata, yes, he's here still, Alban Lakata. He's an amazing man, an amazing agent, that man, a former double world champion, and he's still giving it as, uh, as strong as ever. Becking and Diaz, not a good day for the Buff Megamo uh, team, eight minutes down and a terrible day for Beers and Blevins of Toyota Specialized 91 find out what uh, the background to that uh, story is. Well, I believe we've got uh, Matt Beers lined up on the finish line. We'll be able to catch up with in a moment. But uh, just before we do that, we would uh, just take a glimpse at the hard work of Nina Schurter and Andre Fresh Connect. They have gained the lead. And they have over a m almost a minute on Eger and Baum. 57 seconds. Sievold Stozek, 127 back. But very close is Ravensteiner and Allemann. Four teams within one and a half minutes is almost nothing at all. There's still all to, all to play for. And let's not uh, also forget the base and Miller pairing. Haga Eurostil in the top six. Those two Italian friends are doing rather nicely. Vincenzo Nibali and Samueli Poro are just uh, 20 seconds behind uh, Bass and Miller and very much in the thick of things. There's no problem at all with uh, Nibali. We've had many former road cyclists and uh, he is certainly one of the highest performing ones at uh, the Absic Epic. Seven spot is an impressive day out. May well be hearing from uh, Blevins and Beers. Not quite yet. Now, I can tell you what we can see at the top of Rotary Drive. That's pretty much where we are there. The wind is absolutely ferocious up there. And we saw how much of a role it played in that uh, finale on the descent and on the flat sections just before that little plateau, just before the uh, tar descent. It was crossing the road from, uh, from a, not quite a right angle, but from a diagonal angle, and it shredded the field. It all looked like they could be together, and with that wind, it uh, played a big role in uh, the outcome of today. And just spare a thought for the amateurs who have to head through there later on and uh, do that descent. They'll be taking great care so as not to risk anything. Buko uh, type dev coming in there. They are the uh, reigning champions in the Apps African uh, jersey category. Uh, Marco Hubert and uh, Peter de Toy as they roll in uh, today after a yeah, tough day. A uh, really brutally hard day across the board for all these riders uh, today, no matter what you uh, spare. Thomas Bonda and uh, Jan Vitar of a Security 24 across the line. Combination uh, riding for the second time. Bonda didn't finish last year. But uh, yeah, this is a, as, uh, <laughs> as, as Lucas Baum said there, you know, true tradition. Well, he's only been here twice and he's found out what it's about. Um, certainly by winning it, but also the first day is always a tough one. Many felt that th 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 <laughs> this first day perhaps w wasn't going to be quite as tough as, as uh, previous years, but I think we've seen it today. Yeah, the first day, the first real stage of the Cape Epic is always tough. Everybody comes into the first stage relatively fresh. That means that you can rest assured that the, the top speed at the very front of the race will be high, and that's the one you have to, to follow. So yeah, stage one is always tough, no matter the, the amount of climbing, no matter the terrain and the distance, it is always a tough day. I think uh, last year's stage one uh, set a benchmark for perhaps the hardest, and that was more to do with the incredible heat um, that created an oven-like atmosphere for 
the riders as they made their way around uh, the back of uh, Lawrenceford and back into the valley. It really was just uh, almost unbearable, and uh, there were a lot of riders who weren't able to finish that one. Today, the, the, the heat isn't an issue. There may be a little bit of uh, rain later on. But remember, you can uh, get the app uh, wherever you uh, purchase your, your apps, uh, the Epic Series uh, app. And it keeps you up to date on this event, the Absa Cape Epic, the pinnacle of the Epic Series, and also informs you of all the other wonderful races, the Croatia Four Islands, the uh, Andorra Epic, and the Spa Swiss Epic, as well as the uh, uh, Wines to Wales and various other events on the calendar you'll be able to catch up with there. And uh, you can win an entry to the Four Islands Croatia. Uh, subscribe on www.epic-series.com and put your name in the hat. You want to go to that event. It is like uh, no other. It's, uh, 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 crossing uh, the uh, the islands on uh, on um, ships and boats and then riding on the various islands in the Croatia. Let's go down to the finish and hear from the stage winners, William Pirelli. Hello, and we are here with the winners of today, Vilio Pirelli. Congratulations, guys. Just what was it like out there today and, and crossing that finish line in first position on stage one? That's a pretty big win, right? Yeah, it was an impressive day today. Really hard day, half tough stage, a lot of uh, wind. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was dropped uh, two, three times in the wind, but uh, I was still fighting and uh, fight back. And then uh, in the end, we was with the uh, Scott guys together and we go full gas to the finish and uh, we can win this stage. Super happy. And what does it mean compared to the other podiums you've had here at the Epic? Yeah, today was really fight until the last, last moment. So, yeah, it's uh, really nice to win a stage like this. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, always impressive, like the, the first two times. And um, what about the pace out there today? There was a lot of intention today. Um, for you guys, what did you see up at the front there? And uh, how did you manage to deal with it? Yeah, it was really hard because there was also some attacks from the speed company. So it was felt quite hard to pace from the start and then uh, yeah we managed to come back uh, we tried to save some energy and then in the end we saw that everybody was uh, quite dead but also we were uh, feeling the pace so yeah then we decided to go just full gas to the finish and uh, finally we made it so yeah no we're super happy and i'm um, seeing what you saw today with the pace can you guys win this uh, it's still uh, still a long week so we have to now we have to look day, uh, day by day and then uh, if we can continue like this it's looking good but yeah it's the cape epic the hardest race in the world so you never know okay guys i think it's prize giving time but thank you very much for your time and uh, congratulations today thank cheers i've been ravenstein on the left there the uh, champion of europe and his uh, partner Bart alaman winning stage one of the absolute cape epic we look back at uh, what has been a dramatic uh, day of racing. This was the start line uh, in the early hours of this morning, just after sunrise. And bright and early starts. Uh, a little early for uh, some who are not quite used to this, like uh, Vincenzo Nibali. Road races uh, around the world, and particularly in Europe, only starts at mid-morning. And getting up at 4.30 in the morning was perhaps a little too early, but... Uh, they uh, managed to, to get him up and have his pasta and get him ro rolling. And uh, they headed off for the uh, start line with the intention in their eyes, so particularly for the uh, Orbea Liet Speed Company pair of Gail Geiger and Lucas Baum, who picked up uh, where they left off a year ago by setting a ferocious pace. The yellow jerseys on the shoulders of uh, Christopher Blevins from the United States and his partner Matt Beers. Toyota Specialized 91 had uh, that jersey to defend by only seven seconds today so not much in it at any stage and uh, so they knew they would be targets at some stage early sections of a single track the road the uh, the field strung out that was the uh, eager chase to get onto the single track in uh, prime position and from then on it was a long uh, drag some of those getting a little caught in the congestion uh, at the back and then the climb up uh, rotary drive was split a little, but you could sense that uh, front bit were just uh, keeping their powder dry initially because they had still had plenty of work to do. And uh, it's a long drag, and then uh, sweeping down the uh, single track, getting onto the front very early on. 
Well, the of beer speed company racing with at least one of them Gail Gega he as you heard in the interview afterwards from uh, Lucas Barmanega that uh, he was the man who uh, set the pace today and threw down the gauntlet early on to all others to say well catch us if you can the pairing was super aggressive from the start and uh, it shades of last year really where they came in there there were the brash newcomers and that's no no difference from when it comes to 2023 events they're playing the same tactic and it's causing the same ructions because uh, the other teams clearly have to respond. Up the gorge climb, a beautiful little single track, uh, quite remote with a uh, quite a drop uh, into the Onrus River down below as they made their way up uh, to the Bors Dam, which is the dam wall at the, at the top. And uh, so they made their way along the roadside, the R320. This is further back, uh, Tristan, uh, Nokia and his partner Adrian Borges of uh, Toyota Specialized in support of Matt Beers and Chris Blevins with one of the insect science riders Keegan Bontekuning there as well. Early on the attack had gone from uh, the Speed Company racing men and uh, these two, uh, the Scott Sram pair, had to uh, fight their way back onto it. Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnet. Frischnet looked as though he'd uh, had an issue early on and uh, Schurter paced him back to join the lead group which was at this stage uh, consisting of two teams, Toyota Specialized 91 and Obia Liet uh, Speed Company as they headed up the Babylon climb, a very, very tough, uh, steep climb. And credit to Schurter and Frischknecht, they were really working well together. They had some good cohesion. They were um, they were riding in, in some uh, symbiosis, you could say. They've um, certainly a team that's evolved in, 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 the, in the team symbiosis um, area. But it was uh, the intention of uh, Gail Gagar and Lucas Baum to lay down the heat early on here. It really was, and uh, as we heard from the pairing, uh, Gail Gagar was feeling strong all day long, and he sensed that his partner Lucas Baum was feeling good too, and he, he thought, okay, now is our moment, we, we need to go. And uh, there was a moment, though, that uh, did uh, cost them a little uh, when uh, Gao Gega did have a fall, but what we see here is that all those groups, uh, Scott Sram, Willia Pirelli and the Canyon Northwave had uh, joined up with the, this lead group, creating the day's uh, elite break. Now this is where things uh, went to uh, arrive for uh, the uh, pair, not quite yet, but this is them chasing back after an initial mechanical from Lucas Baum. They had to uh, empty the tank a little and if you know on reflection the fall and and this little effort maybe these little efforts uh, do accumulate into uh, costing them the women's race well uh, saw the uh, race leaders in the cm.com uh, leaders jerseys uh, specialized 91 go up ahead and they had their two uh, rivals with them uh, for the early stages so Vera Lossa and Kim Lacourt as well as Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill the two favorite teams the three favorite teams from uh, from the prologue a very close battle we had yesterday and well, they were uh, in the mix all together again today or in the first part of the day and there's an opportunity for uh, one of those teams because it was a really really close opportunity to pick up a, uh, a leader's jersey this is uh, the pace at the front it was red hot lucas baum on the front here with the gail Egger on his wheel and absolutely flying and then that just in fact left the trail a little it went into the grass there went down hard uh, back on except that he had to stop to readjust his uh, his uh, top tube and his uh, his uh, front wheel had uh, gone skew so that again costly Had a bit of a concern about his shoe <laughs> of course uh, that uh, mark or the, the removed Lycra from his uh, shorts was from a previous uh, incident where a tree had caught his uh, had caught his shorts. So European champion Fabian Rabensteiner then on the front dictating the pace. No shirt behind him, and Edgar and Baum tucked in together. They seldom leave each other's sides or wheels. They are always together. The yellow jersey still in there, but notably Blevins just off the back of this group. Yeah, and we'll still need to get confirmation on what it ac exactly happened, but it was quite clear that this team uh, was suffering, especially Chris Blevins. And Matt Beers really had to adjust to his partner and, re and nursing him through. Today was definitely not uh, a good day for them. 
Blevins just up a, uh, at, at the back, and uh, this is a uh, concern. There's Martin Stosek and Andreas Sevalt. Sevalt of uh, the Canon Northwave team and Stosek. They were looking very strong, and you could see here they were now trying to get past the yellow jerseys, perhaps not holding the pace that they were they were wanting. And uh, Sevalt got onto the front at uh, some stage in these uh, rough and very, very windy conditions. That would have taken a toll on, on the riders for sure today. Sevold looking strong, the German, and uh, Storsek, his Czech partner of Canyon Northway, perhaps not enjoying the strongest uh, day today. And that's the, the, the uh, beauty of the dynamic of the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, not every uh, combination is feeling the same, so you've got to just uh, manage the, uh, the partner all the way through. We've seen it from virtually every team uh, today. Someone, uh, one of the, the riders had, uh, had a tough day. Definitely, and remember this is a team's race and it is how you manage that uh, difference between you and your partner that, uh, that makes all the difference uh, in the end. Today was a super windy day and uh, making it uh, very tough for, for teams to, to actually work together because sometimes you would end up in heavy crosswind and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not easy riding and, and helping each other when the conditions are like this. Uh, the uh, red jerseys of the Absa. Uh, African jersey leaders. Uh, the yellow jerseys on the back of this lead group as Egar and Baum put their noses into the wind, uh, which they spent most of the day uh, doing today, looking over their shoulder, just assessing. They started to wind up the pace a little, slowly but surely, putting uh, the yellow jerseys under a bit more pressure. And uh, in a short while, it snapped for Chris Blevins, it seems. Well, Chris Blevins riding at the back, it's not always a good sign if the yellow jerseys are riding at the back of a, even if it's a small compact group. And uh, we saw the ebb and flow really of the, of the, of how the riders were feeling throughout the day. We saw Martin Stozek was struggling a little bit and Andreas Stivolt, we're not sure exactly what happened, but he did have to close the gap. But uh, <laughs> it was uh, Orbia Liet, a speed company, who were the aggressors of the day and Really, it was uh, one of those one of those um, flashbacks that we had from last year, where we just thought, "Well, this could be another one of those dramatic performances." And uh, the big questions were: Could they survive it? Could they hold on to that lead? Yeah. Now, this is the crucial moment. A little bit earlier, just before this uh, shot, we saw Chris Blevins just basically almost stop still, stop dead still. He just dropped off this group, picked up a bottle. And there he is, uh, languishing uh, off the back of this group. They weren't going to, the rest of the riders weren't going to let Matt Beers know that his partner had uh, virtually uh, dropped right off the back of the, uh, the group. And Beers was pushing the pace, not driving it too hard. And uh, Blevins was nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile, the women's race was taking on a new dynamic. Uh, Candice Lill doing an enormous amount of work on the front ahead of the, uh, the race leaders with Amy Wakefield just managing uh, to stay with the race leaders as well. That uh, race also unfolding in dramatic fashion today. Yeah, we saw some teams having some, some big issues uh, in the women's race and uh, it'll be interesting to hear the, the detailed stories on, on just what, uh, what happened here. And uh, the notable absentees now from this group of the yellow jerseys as uh, Egger and Baum continue to uh, lay down the pace up front. But at this stage, it was only 30 seconds uh, in the uh, gap to the, the uh, rest of the chasers. Scott Sram, MTB, Schurter and Frischnick, uh, Canyon Northwave, Andreas Sirvold and Martin Stosek here going through and of course uh, William Pirelli, Fabian Ravenstein of the European Champion and Bart Allemann from Belgium. That was the nucleus of this chase group and a high quality one it was too. And very select and quite a few notable absentees as well. We were expecting the uh, duo of Hans Breaking and Jose Diaz. They were losing a lot of time today and the Bulls uh, venerable team at the Absa Cape Epic um, written into the history. They were also off the pace as they were these two this is uh, the sorry state and the sorry picture of uh, toyota specialized 91 beers and blevins well beers clearly just nursing his partner to the finish uh, as best he possibly can and trying not to lose too much time there's a week's racing to come there's so much that still can happen uh, the no you know eight Eight, ten minutes off, you can still try and make that back. Now, on the top of Rotary Drive, Egger and Baum, they were tried one last dash off the front, but they couldn't hold 
the power of Nino Schurter and Andre Frischnick. And it was uh, Schurter and Frischnick and the William Pirelli pair, Ravensteiner and Alleman, who brought it to the finish on this last bit of uh, trail and into the finish. Alleman and uh, Ravensteiner, well, they got away. Uh, Schurter quite happy with the lead they had over Egger and Baum. And they would take the yellow jerseys, allowing Ravenstein to claim a third uh, stage win. And uh, Alleman a second in two years. And third place would be for Georg Eger and Lukas Baum as they rolled in uh, for Obia Liet uh, Speed Company Racing. Another bold day from this pair. Third step of the podium for Lukas Baum on the left, Georg Eger on the right hand side. So the, all the players you see at the, uh, at the race this year, there are three teams on the podium. There are only space for three teams, but uh, Canyon Northwave still very much in the mix. Scott Stram, MTB, Nino Schurt and Andre Fischnick in uh, second place today by a couple of seconds from uh, the stage winners today here at Hermanus on stage one of the uh, 2023 FC Cape Epic. Uh, Fabian Rabensteiner, the European champion, and Wart Allemann, the former Belgian champion, uh, on his right. So uh, they are the stage winners and done themselves uh, a great deal of good in terms of the general classification ahead uh, of uh, stage two. And it's a moral victory as well. They showed great, clever, they showed really clever riding towards the end. They took advantage of the fact that Nino Schurter and Andri uh, Frischnick had exactly this on their mind, that this was the prize they were after, not necessarily a stage win, although that's a bonus, but the overall general classification, that was their goal today, clearly, as Nino Schurter spent a lot of energy at the front. Andri Frischnick, really good symbi symbiosis between these two riders. Nino Schurter, the best of all time, one could argue. And uh, another yellow jersey to his name. Yes, they will be uh, in yellow tomorrow in those uh, smart Echivita yellow zebra striped jerseys as they head out on stage two. So uh, drama aplenty. It was the story of the day. Perhaps the yellow jersey collapsed today. But uh, this is a story unfolding as well in the women's race. As uh, Candace Lill on the, the back of uh, this uh, group, and it is an exclusive group because it is just Amy Wakefield ahead of her. There looks like there's been drama here as well with a change in uh, leadership and potentially a change in overall lead. Yeah, this team is on a mission today. We saw earlier on how they had uh, crashes and issues. They, s they recovered from that and now they are in the lead. And actually even uh, in the virtual uh, uh, leader's jersey of uh, this race uh, at the moment. So impressive uh, racing from this team, especially after hearing that uh, they had quite a severe crash. Yes, we heard earlier from uh, um Bulls uh, media e-bike rider Isla Short that uh, they had a crash and that, a well, Amy Wakefield had a crash and that she has uh, cut her bicep but managed to get up and ride. That's the second crash in two days for her. What a brave, bold ride from uh, Amy Wakefield alongside Candice Little, who then did a lot of the work on the front of that group. They were with Sofia gomez Verfan and uh, Katharina Nash for much of the day, but clearly have got away and put in good time, over two minutes. And there is, in fact, a time check that in, 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 uh, updates that to over three minutes there ahead of uh, 91 Songo Specialized. Yeah, that's it's uh, incredible uh, racing from these two. But uh, we did expect that uh, they could go well today. Um, at the beginning, they, they had a crash. They were distanced by uh, the 91 Sango Specialized team, but actually it didn't take them long before they were back with that team. And it looked like Sofia and Katarina, they, they really didn't attack. They were more like riding consistently, conserving, and well, this team that we're seeing right now, they took great advantage of that. It is interesting, that tactic. I mean, it, Katharina is in her first uh, Absa Cape Epic, but she's not a rider who's been racing the World Cup circuit at the, at the level that, uh, uh, say, Haley Batten was last year. So is that just a, let's just take this day and see how we work together, and let's just, just measure it. We're not going to lose, well, we hope we're not going to lose too much time. We don't want to explode today. No, but Katarina is a is a rider with great experience and she's still very active when it comes mm. to racing. I know she's doing a lot of local uh, American gravel races and uh, doing quite well. So she's an experienced uh, racer who is uh, still racing. So she knows herself when mm. it comes to, to racing and managing her effort. And uh, maybe that's the plan then. Let's just uh, 
We've got a whole week here. Let's not uh, go too deep too early. Exactly. And it's all about uh, how you measure your efforts, not just on the day, but throughout the week. You're uh, think riding for tomorrow and also eating for tomorrow, drinking for tomorrow. And uh, just uh, that last selective climb that we've been talking about for so long, the Fernkluf climb, that's the really the last obstacle of the day. And the duo of Wakefield and Lil have already breached that. They breached Fernkluf. They've gone over the single track section, and they're now on that plateau section that we saw the men racing on. It'll be all exciting to see what kind of a gap they've opened up. The clever riding of Candace Lil letting Amy Wakefield set the pace, and now Candace Lil getting on the front and powering across the flat section. What a day it will be for this pair if they can uh, hold it all together. They've got a while to go, but it's now that you feel the hard work is done and uh, they just need to keep it together to get to Hermanus and claim the stage win. And with it, the CM.com uh, Orange Leaders jerseys because there was very little between them uh, at the start of the day. So the potential is that uh, we'll have a uh, South African team in the, the Leaders jerseys going into uh, stage two here at the FCK Epic. That would be uh, fantastic for the local fans, that's for sure. There they go. So uh, let's see if we can uh, catch up with uh, our uh, Bulls e-bike rider. Isla Short is uh, uh, up there with the riders. They're above Hermanus yeah. now. Not long to go. Isla. No, not able to uh, connect with uh, Isla Short just at the moment. Isla, are you with us? Can we uh, uh, catch up on a little bit of detail on how this has all unfolded? Where did they get away from the leaders? So that's, we, we just caught there, Katharina couldn't hold the pace, is that right? That's correct, yeah, she's just definitely struggling to hang on. Now Candace Lil looks uh, very, very strong, and uh, well Amy is amazing because she's had that crash. This pair riding incredibly well. Yeah, I, I actually cannot believe the strength that they've shown It's amazing how well they've worked uh, together today and uh, they've got a handy lead now just over three minutes over uh, Gomez Viafan and uh, Katharina Nash and uh, it looks like Kim Lacord and Vera Lossa have lost uh, nearly eight minutes uh, on the uh, the leaders here and they were in the EPSA African Jersey leaders they were second after the prologue but uh, clearly not going quite according to plan today for the Mauritian and the Namibian and uh, there'll be a change in that category as well. But more importantly, they probably will still wear the African jersey leaders jersey tomorrow because uh, Wakefield and uh, Lil are likely to be in the uh, CM.com women's leaders jerseys tomorrow. Yeah, they'll be uh, the virtual. They'll be holding the, those two jerseys and um, Wakefield and Candice Lil. It's the first time that they've ever worn that. Uh, well, not the first time that uh, Candice Lil has worn the jersey, but uh, Amy Wakefield your first time to pull on that orange uh, leaders jersey of the cm.com women's category look at this wind at the top of the uh, mountain it is uh, unbelievable we had reports that it was around 90 kilometers an hour not necessarily here but somewhere on the route but it's not far off that here no it is uh, absolutely uh, insane we often talk about that uh, this race is uh, not only against yourself and your competitors but it's also against the conditions, the route, the, everything that's thrown at you. And today, with the wind, it's definitely one of the things that uh, you'll have to tackle. And uh, that's uh, what they'll try and do here, is that uh, Candace is riding a uh, windward side of uh, Amy, trying to give her as much shelter as possible. Uh, Amy, the smaller of the two riders, and a rider clearly who's suffered today, courtesy of that uh, crash we heard uh, a little earlier, that she'd uh, punctured a, a bicep. I hope, uh, well, clearly it's, I mean, it, it may well be serious, but it's uh, not serious enough that it can prevent her from uh, riding as well as she is today. Exactly, and if it's, it's not her leg, it's her bicep. Yep. So let's hope that that, uh, that, that hope that 
let's hope that continues and that she doesn't uh, have any further issues throughout the week. But today, showing no signs of that holding her back. Often when you something like this uh, happens to you uh, in the race, you get a massive uh, adrenaline mm. uh, boost. And uh, that makes you unable to, to feel the pain and, and, you know, the suffering and the impact on your body. Often, you know, after the, the finish line and uh, after settling down and starting to your recovery, that's, that's the point when you start to feel, you know, the soreness and really get an idea, okay, how serious uh, is this injury? So hopefully she'll be ready for tomorrow, but I can tell you right now, she's just riding purely on adrenaline. Yeah. Absolutely, it's when you, yeah, you get to the finish and uh, start calming down and then suddenly the, the pain uh, surges back. But yeah. let's hope not for yeah, Amy yeah. Wakefield. What a dream for uh, Amy Wakefield to see uh, the finish line in a f well, not too long a time she'll be coming in as uh, Aaron Willemie and uh, Tobias Schmitzmann, uh, the German pair, come in. A little bit of a charge for the line. Yeah, they'll be delighted. That is Mike Posthumus and Craig Uriah. I think they have won the uh, Masters today. Uh, so that'll be, uh, there's a battle going on in that uh, Masters category. Onto the tar road. They know, they know these trails so well. They've ridden it many, many times. Candice Lill and Amy Wakefield. Candice just trying to stay ahead. The wind probably coming from around 2 o'clock, uh, maybe half past 1, 2 o'clock is uh, with 12 up the straight up the road. And that's why Candace is a fraction ahead of Amy trying to shelter her and give her something, some protection. Yeah, that sweet spot, that draft behind uh, Candace Lill will be just a little bit to the left and, and back. And uh, normally we'd see the riders following directly behind. It's just uh, conditions are pretty fraught up there. And we did hear earlier that the speed of the wind was around about 90 kilometers an hour at the top of the rotary drive. And they're going to be hitting that time check, the 90 kilometer time check pretty soon. And then it's really all downhill from there. They've got a short section of um, of some ins and outs of the town after that, but it'll be a fast descent on the tar into Hermanus. And uh, hopefully, if barring incident, Glory will be theirs. Well, looking uh, composed and strong, and uh, no doubt uh, just starting to entertain the thoughts of, wow, we could be winning uh, this stage, and not just that could be in the uh, the jerseys they won't know exactly what the, the gap is to uh, the uh, leaders but uh, they'll be aware that it's not they didn't have to put in too much today to to take those jerseys no especially taking into account you know the the, the struggles they had to overcome uh, i mean the gap uh, from them to to the chasers would be even bigger i imagine if they weren't having to to deal with crashes and coming back and uh, managing the effort so it's a super impressive uh, performance by by this team today they're really giving it everything they know that they, they're in the lead and of course they are here to to win the race and if they can pull in a big gap to to the other teams yeah the more the better it's always uh, it's always the, the bigger the gap is to your competitors uh, to the more you can relax you know the less you have to be to be on the attack for the uh, coming stages flying down a descent they came up here earlier this morning on uh, the first kilometers of today's stage but now the finishing touches to a remarkable ride by the uh, pair of Amy Wakefield and Candace still a scratch team put up put together just a couple of weeks ago e4.net uh, Seattle coffee company uh, Wakefield and Lil after each of his respective initial partners uh, withdrew from uh, riding the Absa Cape Epic and uh, they've made it count here and certainly the last was definitely a last minute decision a last minute decision to ride together and one of the big stories of the lead up to the race uh, behind the scenes was uh, was this pairing at the last minute and uh, boy, are they grateful they did. You can see here uh, both uh, having, I believe, both having driver seat posts on the bike. And in order to stay as uh, aerodynamic and as fast as possible down this descent, dropping the seat posts to really stay nice and low and, and fast. This is an extremely fast descent. And when it comes to aerodynamics, it's all about the frontal area of the rider, the, uh, I guess, the reverse view. If you're looking at the rider right now, you're looking uh, at, at just, uh, as we said, the frontal area. Uh, the dropper post can reduce that front area significantly. Down as low as you possibly can go. Likewise, uh, 
can, as you can see, the dropper sitting down uh, low, chin over the uh, bar, and uh, maximizing the aerodynamic effect as best as possible. Yeah, today for this team is a massive uh, boost to, to the morale. Uh, they have everything to win uh, today, but also in this race in general, because, you know, this, this race were almost not to happen for this, uh, this team. So they, they are flying and they're doing a solid job here. We're just looking at the speeds. We've got uh, a little bit of insight to the speed of, uh, of Isla Stowe at the moment. She was well, just on that steep downhill section. They were going around about 75 kilometers an hour which on a mountain bike is pretty fast. Don't tell your mum you're doing 70 hours <laughs> down the hill here. Um, In 2019, I did this race with uh, Anna van der Breggen. We're going yes. down this exact same descent, going super fast. And all of a sudden, I can't remember if it was kids or some chicken that would like run out in front of us. That was a scary moment. Wow. Yeah, that was uh, pretty intense. So you never know what this race uh, throws at you, that's for sure. But you'll know what the feeling is like of these two as they're heading towards the stage win because you did win uh, that and another stage here in Amanis. Yes, yes. And I can tell you, you know, no matter how tired you are at this point, the last few kilometers you are absolutely <laughs> flying. Yeah, that's good to hear from our amateur leaders, uh, Ian Boswell, Mitch Docker at uh, the finish. Ian and Mitch, uh, Ian, just sum up that uh, day one of the Cape Epic. Just what, was the, what kind of experience was that for you guys? I mean, in general, it was awesome. I mean, like the single track at the beginning race, I've never done a mountain bike race of this length in a group. Um, it was awesome, but like the, by, by 20K to go, I think we started to realize we probably raced a little bit too hard today. <laughs> and Mitch, for you, just what was that like? Uh, what were the aspirations at the start of the race and, uh, and coming out the end? Yeah, I think exactly what Ian said. Everyone went really hard at the start, and we just sort of jumped in with it and thought, oh, okay, this is what we do, and just sort of kept racing harder and harder, and then, like Ian said, like 20K to go, we thought, there's still 20K to go. And, um, yeah, you just really have to grovel to the end of the race. It's, it's pretty solid out there. Like, the end of the race is really taxing. This is a proper uh, welcome to the epic stage um, as, far as, the, as far as 2023 goes. Um, can you compare it to anything else you've done? On the road, yeah, look, it, it does remind me of some hard classics races. The difference is, like a Paris-Roubaix or a Tour of Flanders, the difference is they're one day. I've got to do this again tomorrow and more. I'm a bit nervous about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot There's a lot more to come. Um, and uh, you guys are leading the amateur category. Just uh, how does that feel? Oh, it feels great. I mean, we got stuck into this battle with the Masters who were just absolutely killing each other. We didn't realize until 10K to go, like, we're not racing them. So that's when we're like, all right, let's just look, because it was two teams, and we just let them go. Um, but, but it wasn't yeah. really by choice, was it? <laughs> no. no, which is cool to see, you know, you're passing a lot of people out there, but, you know, there are times when we felt comfortable, and there's times when we were definitely a little bit in over our heads. Mm. And, um, I mean, it is a spectacular landscape. Just kind of give us some highlights of what you saw today. Uh, look, I think in the beginning there, I don't know exactly where we were, but we were running along this ridge, and I actually took myself out of the race and just looked around and went, this is awesome. It really was cool. The trails were really cool, and you just, it felt like a journey. You just kept traveling through these different areas, and the, and the terrain changed, and the ground changed, and you could feel like, okay, I'm in a different area now. Some I liked, some I didn't, but um, most of the time, it was just a great journey through all the land and all the different areas. And Ian, for you, uh, terrain-wise, just uh, how, how dealable was it, and uh, did you get a chance to look up every now and again? I did, yeah. I mean, I did a lot of looking around just because, I mean, part of the reason we're here is to enjoy and I think embrace, you know, being in, in South Africa and the Cape, and, and it is stunning, but there's definitely times when it's a bit Yeah, a beautiful day out to ride a bike. And what are we going to see from you guys for the rest of the race? We might need to cool our jets a little bit. I mean, I think we, uh, yeah, I think we're not going to try to get involved with the Masters race tomorrow, maybe in a couple of years' time. But I think for the moment, just see where see where we are and you know, just really take it one day at a time because I don't think either of us have ever done uh, a mountain bike race of this intensity and, and just physically how draining it is. Great. Well, thank you very much. Good luck. One down, seven more stages to go. Good luck to you guys. Thanks. Cheers. Have the leaders Ian Bossel and uh, Mitch Docker as we uh, go back to our race leaders in the women's race. Amy Wakefield, formerly Amy McDougall, and uh, Candice Little, formerly Candice Neertling. And uh, they are hammering it to the finish here. 
uh, finish they will certainly relish and uh, remember for a long, long time because they have put in an immense uh, ride today, Candice and Amy, to uh, put the finishing touches to a stage win here in Amanis. And not just that, they are about to ride themselves into the overall race lead, and that is something that for an all-South African pair is a rare, rare occasion. onto the uh, dirt, just a brief section of dirt behind the, uh, the cemetery, and uh, then they will uh, have a short piece of single track onto the road above the uh, showgrounds and uh, the school, and then they'll be uh, into the finish. You see Candice Lil leading uh, Amy Wakefield uh, through there. Candice Lil, a five-time Absa Cape Epic finisher. Uh, her best position second. She's been finished second actually twice, and uh, one stage is... Uh, in uh, 2022 and in 2019. And in fact, she actually rode the Absa Cape Epic in 2018 with Amy Wakefield and they placed fourth. So they've got experience racing together and no doubt that that has played a role in their successful campaign today. They have gained several minutes on their rivals. And just having a look at that time check, we are looking back to 91 Songo Specialized, Sofia Gomez Villafana and uh, Katarina Nash have lost five minutes to this pairing. So the uh, CM.com leaders jersey, the Chiavira leaders jersey is well and truly belonging to Wakefield and Lil, that orange jersey. We're putting on the orange jersey in only a few minutes, but at the moment they've got to really focus on the task at hand, which is to get to the finish and not let any of the obstacles along the way. Not too many obstacles, we've got a bit of single track and uh, turn into town and uh, navigate the final finishing shoot and uh, leave a bit of time for that victory salute. Richie deserved a bit of cloud coming over and we have reports that there is a little few drops of rain, but I don't think it's going to be uh, uh, too heavy, but that uh, won't affect this pair as they are heading towards the glory of a stage win at the Absa Cape Epic on stage one and uh, the honor of wearing the cm.com orange leaders jerseys tomorrow they've put in a remarkable ride and they've put in some serious time into the uh, erstwhile leaders sofia gomez very fun and uh, katharina nash over five minutes when last checked so that is a significant marker they're putting not just a marker that is a uh, an intention that uh, they are here to win this uh, absa cape epic and uh, with pulling on those uh, orange Chivita jerseys, they will not, we won't get a chance to see those national championship jerseys. We see the national championship jersey on the shoulders of uh, Candace Lil. She, in fact, took that jersey off the Amy Wakefield, who won it in 2022. Amy Wakefield, also the uh, African continental champion and uh, winner of the 2019 Wines to Wales. One more bit of trivia. She's a single speed world champion, two time single speed world champion. And so. Really looking forward to, uh, it, it would be a terrible thing to say, but we, uh, we will miss those uh, national championships jerseys, but we will certainly welcome and celebrate them with them, all South African pairing, the orange Chiavita leaders jerseys. And the time trial champion of South Africa on the road and the silver medalist in the on the road as well in the road race. So she uh, knows her way around the bikes, does uh, Candice Lil. But this is a uh, singular honor, winning a stage at uh, the Absa Cape Epic. One last turn on the uh, tar road and into the, uh, the complex that is the high school here. Left turn onto the lawns and uh, they will be welcomed into the finish here at Hermanus like the heroines they should be. It is Candice Lil and Amy Wakefield of eFort.net, a Seattle Coffee Co. who will win stage one in the CM.com women's category. A remarkable ride by these two young women. In four hours, 57 and 50, the stage winners. And with it, they will collect the CM.com uh, overall leaders jerseys. They have uh, ridden like the wind today, and they deserve every bit of credit and celebration they will get today because they are superstars. What a ride by the South African marathon champion and the former champion, that's Candice Lil and Amy Wakefield. Just looking at that bicep that we heard about earlier, we heard about the crash. So it seems to be, uh, to be safe, it would be her left arm. Yes, her left arm will need attention. She'll most likely do her quick interview, a quick chat to the, uh, chat to the camera, then get some attention so that she can continue to get that sort of out as soon as possible. Looks like that's very much on her mind. It's going to be celebrating 
really happy to have won today's stage. To be Amy Wakefield's first stage victory. So a big moment for the uh, South African. He, Amy was uh, raised in Pretoria, but born in, uh, but, but lives now in Cape Town. And she started cycling at 19 years old. So a late bloomer when it comes to the sport of cycling. Yes. And at 33 years old, she's uh, hit her prime. Yeah, she's worked really, really hard at every facet of uh, her being as a, as a cyclist and a mountain biker. Uh, tried cross country and has found uh, the sweet spot in the marathon racing and stage racing. Crowned national champion last year in the marathon at Karkloof. But uh, this is certainly the biggest moment for uh, Amy Wakefield, the seventh South African to uh, win a stage here in the women's category. I think we might be able to hear from uh, Amy Wakefield. And uh, Candice uh, smiling Amy alongside and Candace, her. what a day. What happened out there? <laughs> Nothing but a duct tape couldn't fix. <laughs> no, um, what was it, like 30 k's in? Yeah, we were like really strong and feeling really good. And I took a corner and just got caught on a stick. And I felt my arm was quite sore, so I looked underneath my my sleeve <laughs> and it was just like this massive gash and I could see like fat and muscle and and then I was like okay so I can move my arm and nothing's bleeding so I'm like Candice get your duct tape like we just need to get this closed I can ride and then yeah we just carried on riding and it didn't seem to really like it was kind of sore on the downhills but she's just yeah. a really tough woman you're yeah. both you're both tough cookies and then you actually managed to, to catch back. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, that chase. Yeah, so once uh, that whole episode had happened, I think I said to Ames, let's just stay calm, um, let's do our own pace, and just who cares about anyone else. Um, and we really, we really managed to do that very well today. And I think at around 60, 70 k's, we actually managed to ride away. So, so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe it. Super impressive performance. Thank Congrats you. you. Congrats. Thank you. Well, a remarkable story that is uh, Amy Wakefield with a gash in her left uh, bicep. That, uh, well, she described it in really graphic detail how, uh, how deep it was, but uh, to tape it up with some, uh, some tape and then uh, just carry on riding. Phenomenal. And to not just ride, to ride back into the, the, the lead group and then uh, ride away from the, the overall leaders. Phenomenal. Phenomenal performance and uh, one of the great stories of the of the day and uh, will go down in history as one of the great stories of the Absa Cape Epic. There are so many of them and that will definitely be a highlight for uh, for the South African fans and of course for Amy Wakefield. Not necessarily a, a great thing to have an injury is something that will mark uh, mark your moments and mark your memories in the, in the Absa Cape Epic or in mountain biking in general but uh, a stage win like this in dramatic fashion. Impressive stuff. And Speedy riding to victory on the final day with a broken collarbone alongside Catherine Williamson. Quite a r remarkable performance some years ago. So uh, this is up there. Uh, so Ben Spitz had a big crash here on the, on this stage some years ago as well. So, yep, absolutely amazing. The strength, the courage, and the determination to finish, and the incentive of uh, not just a stage win, and perhaps at that stage it was a stage win. They were feeling good. And then, uh, then the realization as they started riding away from uh, Sofia Gomez, very fine, and uh, Katrina Nash, that uh, they actually could ride themselves into the overall lead. Absolutely, and uh, just that when you have an opportunity like this, and when you're on form like like these riders are, and they are not only on form, they are at the peak of their careers, in their very early 30s, they look to be uh, this is looking to be the best that they're going to be at the Absa Cape Epic. They may have a few, uh, they will have a long career ahead of them still. But this is when they are absolutely at their best. They will not want to miss the opportunity of being at their best at the most competitive mountain bike stage race in the world. And to pick up prizes like a leader's uh, jersey is uh, is something that will go. It, it, that that jersey will be hanging hanging in the in the uh, in the study for pretty much forever. I reckon it will. And uh, well, it does. You know, now obviously in the post ride, uh, Amy's going to have to have that uh, that uh, bicep looked at, and as uh, Anik uh, related and probably from very, very good first-hand experience, you have an accident in a race and you suffer a s what looks to be a very serious injury, um, but you get over it because the adrenaline is pumping and you are uh, very much uh, in control and you think, well, I'm, I'm inspired and uh, the, the there's no shock, but uh, then you do uh, uh, 
uh, once it's all over, suddenly start feeling the pain and, uh, and suffering. We just saw a, a team crossing the line at Tumela Marke and Unati Momalo from B Pump for Peace finishing. And here are the uh, former race leaders, Sofia gomez Villafan and Katharina Nash of uh, the uh, specialized uh, 91 team. And uh, they are some five minutes and 54 seconds down. Yeah, these are not uh, official results, but uh, we are, uh, gives, gives us a good indication. They are from the timing mats, 5 minutes and 54.9 seconds to be exact. Still waiting for the official results, as we said. But uh, also really what we here want to hear is how today went and uh, how these two are feeling. It's a bit of a disappointment to lose those Chiavita orange jerseys for Villafana and Katrina Nash. Villafana got very accustomed to them over the course of the 2022 edition. And uh, they'll have to keep uh, keep the morale up and remember that all is not lost. There's still everything to play for. It's a long week ahead. And with uh, stages two, three, of course, we've got the time trial on stage four. And then a backloaded race. We've got some very tough stages on the latter half of the week. Well, is there evidence there that little uh, look down at the... Uh, the tire that there was perhaps an issue with uh, the uh, the team nevertheless uh, they look uh, pretty pleased with the way it finished they're not too uh, disappointed Sofia Gomez Villafan and uh, Katharina Nash one of the key things about uh, having a bad day is keeping your morale up it's very difficult to do but uh, it's one of the things that you can have control over it's all about the situations that you can control and uh, the uh, Bulls were masters of that in fact they pioneered the fact that you have a bad day it's just about how you respond to it how you act and how you how calm you are when it comes to dealing with those mishaps and no doubt lessons learned and Sophia Villafana will have learned from her trade team the specialized factory racing team 91 Songra specializes the team name but it is a factory racing team they will have some fantastic intel from over the years of racing uh, headed by the uh, really if we look at the the, the two winningest riders at the Absa Cape two of the three winningest riders, five victories between them, or five victories each, the Annika Langfall and of course the none other than Christoph Sauza, and both deeply involved still with the team and uh, lending their intel. Sofia Villafana leads Katarina Nash through, still seem to be in good spirits, they know that six minutes down they've still they had a little bit of a buffer over um, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill when they were going into the prologue 30 seconds and uh, we're going to cross down to the uh, finish line to see, to hear from them and to hear how things went on the day. Yeah, and uh, it's wonderful to have Annika Langfeld down there doing uh, the interviews with uh, a team she knows well. Let's hear from uh, the uh, second place team in the CM.com women's race. Katarina and Sophia, what a day. We saw you at the beginning actually all of a sudden having a gap on uh, everybody else. And then what happened? Yeah, I mean, I think our gap was uh, we were riding our bikes within control and there was one left turn that took the girls that were leading in the, South in the Africa jersey out and then we come around this vineyard left turn and then Amy kind of goes into a bush and she cut her arm pretty good. So then, um, you know, we didn't push it. We didn't take advantage of the situation, but we're like, you know, it's such a long race and we're still really learning how to work together. And yeah, they did a massive effort to catch up to us and then on a little bit of the crosswind, they just kind of played a little bit of tactics and got away and we couldn't close the gap, but you know, it's racing. It's true. And how much of a role did the wind play out there today? Yeah, it was blowing. It was uh, it was really hard. Not that not that I was up front all that much. I <laughs> had uh, Sofia do a lot of the work today, so thank you. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it is windy around here for sure. And tell me a little bit about the the finish here of the race because we saw you having, I think, a, a three minute gap to the leaders, and it seems like it grew a little bit here towards the end. Uh, I don't know the gaps quite yet, but yeah, I had a, a bit of a crash on a pretty high speed uh, fire road, so we definitely lost a bit of a time, and then uh, I think the last climb was just a little too much for me at the end, so I wouldn't be surprised if we lost a little bit more, but uh, yeah, it kind of a bummer to lose the jersey, but we've got uh, how many, six more opportunities to get it back, so we'll see. You have plenty of, uh, of uh, opportunity, so, well, go rest up, you girls. Cool, thank you so much. Thank you.
Katharina Nash, Sofia Gomez, Viafan uh, talking uh, at the end of the stage in which they finished second today and lost those uh, leaders' jerseys to E4.net, Seattle Coffee Co., uh, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill, who uh, clearly took advantage of the wind and uh, were very clever and uh, brave in the way they uh, attacked the, uh, the uh, orange jerseys. Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa, the uh, leaders in the African Abs, uh, Abs African jersey before today's stage, and they finish in third place, 11 minutes, uh, over 11 minutes down uh, for the Namibian and the Mauritian champion. So they will uh, lose the jerseys uh, in reality, but will probably be wearing them tomorrow because uh, the overall leaders will be uh, an all-African combination as well in Wakefield and Lille. But, uh, well, a tough day for Vera and for Kim after a really good performance yesterday. I know Vera had a crash at some stage today. Quite early on, we saw her flash through the uh, picture with her number um, off kilter. Um, but smiling as they get to the finish. Uh, and we'll probably hear from them shortly in the company of uh, Annika Langfeld. They've been looked after by a former racer here. Uh, Theresa Ralph is in their corner looking after the... Uh, efficient infinity and surety. Well, great mentor to have. She's done, she's a well-experienced campaigner, Teresa Ralph, and we'll be hearing from uh, from them just how today went. We saw Vera Laws's uh, number board was a bit skew, so that uh, might have definitely would have played a role. Let's hear from them. Uh, over to you, uh, Anika. I'm here with uh, Kim and Vera, so what a dramatic day. Tell me uh, what happened out there today. Sure, yeah, it's a tough day. Um, I knew it was going to be hard, the terrain is rough and everything. I had a little tumble, but it was my own fault in the beginning, and I had to um, duct tape my shoe. Um, <laughs> we lost a bit of time, but it wasn't what actually made it up at the end. Um, afterwards, yeah, we're both not feeling too great, um, just taking our own time still a long week to come um, yeah and the wind was hectic it couldn't decide from what direction to come it was blowing off us off the parks off the trails but yeah it's proper epic stage I must say it's proper ep epic yeah and what happened when you know the, the race started to unfold and you know people started to attack what happened there yeah I think from the crash we were a bit uh, lost um, and then I, my legs started to give up. I started to cramp all over the show, and I usually don't cramp, so <laughs> it's, yeah, Epic has properly started, but uh, Vera was a good teammate, and uh, we just kept the, the wheels turning and um, just looking after each other. And uh, yeah, the wind was hectic, so good on, good on Specialized. My work is so light, I almost blew off the mountain, so yeah. But that was fun. The view coming into the finish was stunning. At least we got to look a bit at, at the scenery. <laughs> And how are you looking forward to the, the upcoming days? I think we have to take it day by day. We see tomorrow. Tomorrow's another long, long day. Um, it's going to be hot, probably hotter than today. Um, I mean, we're not giving up. Definitely not. We still have six days of racing coming up. So we're excited to see what's coming. Well, good job. Thank you. Vera Lossa and uh, Kim Lacourt, what credit to the uh, sport. They've had a tough day, but all smiles. Here's another look at how it all unfolded in the women's race. Initially, virtually in the first kilometer, the Cannondale uh, women went off the front, but uh, it wasn't uh, too long. They were into the single track first, but uh, thereafter they uh, slipped further back. The orange jerseys were prominent uh, in the right positions there. And we could also see the red jerseys behind them and they're all in a nice, a neat line. And the rotary drive section uh, would be a bit of a selective kind, but uh, with so much racing still to go, it was still Grupo Compatto, as they say, with uh, still the major contending teams and some other teams as well, hoping to uh, catch a ride with them and for as long as possible. But uh, it was after the prologue, it was very clear to all of us that there were three major contending teams of Wakefield and Lil, Villafana and Nash, and Lacourt and Lorza. Still at the early morning uh, light. It's just a beautiful sight of Hermanus down below, but the racing was still yet about to really ignite. It was, but as uh, it got flat, so it started stringing out. It got uh, the, the, the group uh, thinned out, and uh, they were 
at this stage unaware that the wind would be such a factor today it really did uh, rip this field uh, rip the whole race apart and uh, that's just the sharp end of the uh, the elite uci races uh, the amateurs further back down the the field will be uh, facing the brunt of it for much much longer but this was the women's race and the front end there with uh, sofia gomez Verfan and katrina nash as well as uh, E4.net, Seattle Coffee Co. and uh, the Efficient Infinity Insure team all uh, in the right position at this stage as they dropped off Rotary Drive onto this uh, lovely single track trail that took them down towards the Onrus River. They would cross the road, the R320, and then head up, head up on the trails on the other side. We saw the Cannondale Vass Arabe team early on in the, uh, leading the, the field out, and they, uh, they didn't have the, you could say, they didn't have a prologue that, uh, that that was hugely impressive, but no doubt these uh, coming uh, days, they are died in the wool marathoners. In fact, they are specialists at stage racing and very experienced at doing at stage races. So we expect to see more of them throughout the day and throughout the uh, throughout the week. Greta Steinberg and Monica Calderon Martinez, an Estonian and a Colombian, bringing their racing to the uh, Absa Cape Epic for the first time. Meanwhile, onto the uh, single tracks and uh, the Heads uh, of the head of the race was starting to establish itself. Amy Wakefield on the front from very early on. So there was the uh, intention. Of course, the uh, orange leaders jerseys didn't have to do anything except mark their closest rivals today. And at that stage, Vera Losa and Kim LeCourt also very much in this mix with Candace Lill and Amy Wakefield as well. So the three major teams from the, the prologue, the top three on the, the prologue standings, were already separated away from the rest of the batch as they emerged from the gorge section and onto the Babylon section as they headed up towards the big Babylon climb, the day's major climb, certainly in the first half of the race. Beautiful conditions at this stage, really stunning views over the Overberg Mountains and uh, in this stunning uh, Himmel and Arda Valley. Heaven and Earth, uh, it means in uh, Afrikaans, Himmel and Arda. And this is an absolutely stunning. It's a truly beautiful part of the world to visit. And also some fantastic mountain biking in the region. We're vis visiting some uh, unique trails uh, throughout the day. And uh, right, there's some uh, unbelievable views. We saw the view from Rotary Drive. But uh, for these contending teams, it was really all about the view in front of them. The trail in front and keeping a close eye. Because any mishap could affect their chances of overall. And of course, even just finishing the stage. There were certainly mishaps. We heard from the interviews that there were many, that there were uh, many opportunities to fall, and in fact, some riders in fact did, and it, uh, it posed a threat for sure. And duct tape seemed to save the day all round, uh, saving a shoe of uh, Vera Lossa and uh, taping up the uh, left bicep of Amy Wakefield. More concerning, but uh, yep, that's uh, what you need to carry with you in order to uh, help out. As they flew down this uh, descent, the three uh, leading teams, followed by Isla Stowe on our. Bulls Media e-bike. A duct tape uh, story is, is an interesting one because the duct tape is one of the things that uh, is almost, it's de rigueur, it's specified for uh, a race like this because anything can happen. And duct tape is a bit of a cure-all, can uh, fix a shoe, can we even see the duct tape um, being applied to a broken chainstay. So it's uh, it's one of those things that you don't, it's a, for the cross country riders who, uh, who have a full support team, almost like a pits, it's a very different uh, kettle of fish when you're out there in some of the most remote regions, most areas in the Western Cape. This is the phase where the uh, orange jerseys were leading, but uh, they. this is just after the crash, I think, for Amy Wakefield. And uh, you heard uh, Sophia Vifan say they didn't maybe go take full advantage of the accident. This is a long uh, six, seven days. Let's just uh, pace ourselves. So perhaps the opportunity to really put the hammer down uh, they didn't uh, take. Meanwhile, Wakefield and Lil were in the company of uh, Vera Lossa and uh, Kim LeCourt, but uh, Candace Lil is just in supreme form at the moment. She did a lot of work on the front and uh, very fantastic to see that. So they were still uh, up ahead, but not by too much uh, as Lil and Wakefield and Loss and, uh, and LeCourt try to close the gap to them. I think all teams were pretty, pretty much putting down a consistent pace, riding all within themselves, knowing that uh, there was still the unknown ahead of them. And Vera Lorza, that skew number board uh, indicating from as a result of her crash, she did blame herself for it, 
but it's one of those things that anything can happen and it's uh, something that you that riders really once a crash has happened it's like a quick it's a quick body check isn't it it's like um like a, a roll call of all the of all your major faculties and once those are uh, once those boxes are ticked and as soon as you can get back on, you get back on and continue and put it behind you. Yep, and check the bike. Make sure that uh, the hanger isn't bent, that, that the chain's still intact uh, and uh, everything is, is in uh, good neck and then you can uh, keep riding. But these, this pair were, well, they're, they're, yes, they weren't putting the hammer down. They were just uh, maintaining a steady tempo at the front of the field. It's, as they say, it's a new combination and uh, so just getting the feel of and the first time they've ridden a really long stage together so that perhaps was what it's about and uh, just keeping it uh, steady some of the uh, some of the men's teams uh, getting past them and taking care not to interfere mm -hmm. with the uh, cn.com women's category race so uh, all in the spirit of racing this was the moment. Yep, the catch uh, being made by Candice Lill and uh, Amy Wakefield up this uh, windy section of a rough uh, and loose single track. That uh, did uh, characterize much of today's stage, particularly the single track was the loose rough terrain that they had to ride and a very different type of uh, soil and, and, and terrain to, to which they'll finish the ride on and, and what the, to what they rode yesterday. And the riders will uh, they'll cover all kinds of trails. This is a one we call a natural trail, and uh, we've seen some of the most groomed trails in the world with such perfectly banked berms. And yesterday, with the Estosus and the Body Booker berms, they had the opportunity to do some uh, tricks, some tail whips. But this is pretty much rubber down stuff. We want to keep uh, keep the keep any of the any of the um, the tricks to a minimum, because on the natural trails there are obstacles that lie all over the place. Candice Lill on the front at that stage and then up the climb here. Lil and, and Wakefield, maybe just a word or two to each other here as they are still all intact here. We heard uh, in Candice saying that around 70 k's then uh, things started to happen. And bearing in mind that at this point the, uh, the, the crash of Amy Wakefield had already happened. So if we just get a catch a glimpse of her left arm, her left bicep, there'll be a bit of blood on that shirt. and. Uh, a quick fix with the, the duct tape from Candace Lil, but uh, not not affecting the performance of uh, Amy Wakefield. But again, Lil on the front and doing an enormous amount of work uh, on the front to ensure that they kept uh, a decent tempo, knowing that the wind was coming. They weren't in the the, uh, the the hectic part of the wind just yet, but that was coming, and that perhaps presented the opportunity for them to take uh, the lead and take advantage. Uh, Quite often, I mean, Candace Lill's had that experience of riding uh, against the uh, the Songo, uh, the 91 Songo specialized uh, teams before, and uh, they've never really been given even half a chance. Uh, uh, we've seen their teams just power away. Haley Batten and uh, Gomez we found last year, uh, Laura Stigger and Sina Fry the year before. Uh, no half measures there. But here, there's a chance, and perhaps Candace Lill was thinking this is an opportunity for us to, to uh, spring a surprise and get away from them. Uh, let's just take uh, time that uh, attack uh, uh, correctly, and they'll get away, which they did. And all about ha being a racer is about having that killer instinct, and the killer instinct means just being able to sense a bit of weakness. And if there's any weakness, they'll need to pounce. That's what racing is all about. And they'd done so at 70 k's. We didn't see the move, but this is when they got away. And they started to put the big time into uh, Gomez Vivian and at Nash. Three minutes at one stage, it got uh, bigger and bigger. And once they were on rotary drive, it was over five minutes by this time. And uh, the race stage was in their hands. And uh, they knew that they had the chance to take the orange jerseys as well. Absolutely remarkable performance by this. As you see, the blood uh, on the, the left bicep of Amy Wakefield, what a brave ride by uh, Amy Wakefield, incredible performance by her. And they crossed the line in uh, a phenomenal four hours and 47 minutes to take the stage win and confirm their status as uh, the leaders in the overall uh, CM.com women's category. It's one of the most uh, deserved victories we've seen at the Absa Cape Epic uh, with such mishaps throughout the day. And uh, no doubt that Amy Wakefield just nursing that left arm. We'll have to keep an eye on it. In second place, still saving some time, saving the day. Um, that would be 91 Songo Specialized, five minutes down. And uh, just to 
to know that they know there's a, a long week ahead of them they've still got some time to make it up and in third spot efficient infinity insure the absica the absa africa jersey whereas kim lacourt vera laws 11 minutes back live to fight another day absolutely and uh, we saw them smiling and uh, fairly uh, comfortable at the end of the day they managed their efforts sarah hill and elrica harms in pretoria all smiles as they roll across the line and the, uh, she and tame team uh, wanted to see them finish so the orange jerseys on the shoulders of uh, our uh, south african team of amy wakefield and uh, candace little they're going to go back to 2007 to the last all south african women's team to win the overall uh yolandi de villiers prior to that uh, zoe frost and hundle stain courts as she was then winning in 2005. since then a number of south africans have teamed up with uh, international riders the likes of uh, karine van jarsveld and uh, yolan speedy but uh, it uh, is a long time since we've seen an all south african team uh, leading the race and indeed taking it all the way to the finish. A highlight for the fans for sure. And uh, just uh, we saw the Xi'an Tame team coming through there in fifth place. But uh, we did see Cannondale Vas Arabe, that's Steenberg and uh, Calderon. They were in fourth, 24 minutes off the lead. But uh, we talked about their marathon skills and their stage racing skills coming to the fore okay, this weekend. So that's uh, playing out for sure. Okay, Let's so hear from here uh, Matt Beers. We're about to hear from Matt Beers. Uh, of course, he and Chris Blevins had a disastrous day in uh, many senses. They lost over eight minutes to the overall lead. They lost the uh, yellow jerseys and potentially um, uh, they've got to now work incredibly hard and hope uh, cards fall their way later in the week if they want to get back into uh, contention for the overall win. Let's have a look at the podium uh, for today's stage in the women's race. In third place, Infinity Efficient Insure Pair. The Russian champion, Kim Lacourt, and the Namibian champion, Vera Loza. Good friends, and uh, Kim and I are living down in Somerset West. The Russian, and, uh, and, uh, Vera splitting her time between Switzerland and uh, Namibia. And uh, from Argentina, Sofia Gomez, via fan, and from and the Czech Republic, it is uh, Katarina Nash of the 91 Songo Specialized Team in second place today. And still good morale from those teams, from those two teams uh, in, on either side of the winner, but no happier riders today at the Epsi Cape Epic than the middle pairing, the middle team, and that is E Fortnet Seattle Coffee Company. Wakefield and Lil, also very good friends, and uh, clearly a great vibe in the uh, in the team camp at the moment. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you that they would have been hoping for a stage win at some stage this week, but to get it on stage one, and not just the stage win, the way they've done it, putting in uh, just under six minutes into uh, the uh, 91 Songo Specialized team is quite remarkable, and uh, that coupled with the way they've done it with Candice, uh, with uh, Amy's uh, uh, injury and the crash and uh, fighting back she had a crash yesterday uh, amazing uh, performance amazing uh, display of courage and determination and teamwork because candace uh, lil uh, it was amy who said to her, get out your duct tape i want to tape this up i can still ride and uh, let's do it uh, the many other riders perhaps in a similar situation may have taken a lot more time and uh, nursed at home but uh, she said no let's let's get on with it yeah, impressive and certainly uh, we've seen blood on the tracks before and this is yet another one of those stories a bit of a trivia that um, uh, Amy Wakefield sponsor well let's get to that story in a moment um, and uh, talk about another jersey that uh, these pair are wearing the first time and exciting moment for the all South African pairing as Gerald you said since 2004 uh, so 2007 Seven, yeah. and this is Amy Wakefield and uh, Candace Lil they cannot contain themselves. They can't wait to get up on the top step. Emotional time for the South Africans. In the CM.com Orange Leaders jerseys, Amy Wakefield and Candace Lill of E4.net Seattle Coffee Co. They seem very comfortable in those orange jerseys and will replace their, natu their national champs jerseys with Amy Wakefield with those stripes having won the 2022 South African Marathon Championship. And the trivia story that I was getting to was that uh, one of Amy Wakefield's sponsors, Rene Hasselbacher, um, has he, he himself has a, a very 
bloody shirt to his name having crashed uh, quite heavily in the Tour de France. But uh, no doubt that will go into Rene Hasselbacher's cabinet and we are going to be ready to go down to the finish line. Yeah, let's now catch up. We told the story of Chris Blevins and Matt Beers. Blevins uh, seemed to have a, a really torrid day today, but Matt Beers has the story. Let's hear from him. Matt, tough day in the saddle today. Um, can you just uh, sum up uh, kind of where you ended up um, and why, why, why was that the situation? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, the first half of the stage was going really well. We, um, we were at the front, we were feeling pretty good. Um, I mean, the pace was really ferocious and um, I think everyone was feeling a little bit on the limit. But yeah, Chris um, just started experiencing some really bad cramps and I mean, when that happens at the level that it is right now, I mean, there's nothing you can do. Your body, it just gets worse. So we just try to like consolidate and try to try to get him to rest. And um, yeah, obviously, with the terrain being as, as tough as it is, you you lose a lot of time. So uh, yeah. And um, just what's the what's the feeling in the pack? Um, you've done plenty of Cape Apex, but um, just what was the feeling this morning setting off? And uh, what were the intentions out there? Yeah, I mean, it was. You could feel the pace was really high. Um, there was a lot of guys that wanted to win, and it split up a lot earlier than I thought. Um, I think with the climb and then with the descent. Um, but yeah, it's it's the level gets higher and higher every year, and um, um, the winner is more deserving each year. And uh, just how tough is Chris, and is he be back with a vengeance tomorrow? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Chris doesn't give up, and um, it's. I've I've been here before. It's it's just unpredictable. So. Um, he'll rest up, we'll get it done, and it's a long week, so we'll just chip away. Great, thanks a lot, Matt. Good luck. Cheers. Pass the best on to Chris. Disappointed Matt Beers there, uh, confirming the story that it was uh, Blevins uh, suffering from cramps and uh, as a result wasn't able to uh, put in the effort required to stay with that lead group and they lost over eight minutes. Confirming our results in the uh, CM.com women's race today, Amy Wakefield and Candice Lill step up to the very pinnacle of uh, the race by winning the stage in 4 hours 57.46, 5 minutes and 54 ahead of uh, Sofia gomez Villafan and Katharina Nash, the uh, leaders after the prologue. Kim Lacourt and Vera Lossa second on the prologue, third today, 11 minutes down. Steinberg and Calderon Martinez of Canada, Alvasa Arabe in fourth place ahead of Hill and Harms and Pretorius of She Untamed. And Tiffany Keep and Haley Preen of Valley Electrical in sixth place today. So that is how it looks on the general classification. The 524 is the overall lead for Wakefield and Lil. That is a sizable advantage, but uh, as we all know, long way to go. Gomez and Verfan, Gomez Verfan and Nash are a, a combination getting to know each other around the uh, Absecate Epic, and I'm sure they will fight back. As well, Lacorte and Losa, a long way to go. We've had one uh, prologue and a dramatic stage one here at the Absecate Epic. Stage two is going to be another brutal one, 116 kilometers, 1850 meters of climbing. This time they will explore the other side of the trail network here as we look at the men's general classification. Setting off tomorrow's stage in the yellow will be Nino Schurten and Refreshnik of Scottsdale MTB Racing ahead of Gail Gagar and Lucas Baum by 57 seconds. They had a brave ride today. Uh, but couldn't quite uh, last the, the distance. Sivolt and Stosik in third place, and just um, 92 seconds back to fourth place, Ravenstein and Alleman, the stage winners on stage one of this year's Zapsa Cape Epic Base. And Miller had a strong day, 7.34, and uh, they are in the uh, Apps African leaders' jerseys. Uh, Docker and Boswell continue to lead the amateur men's category ahead of uh, Rogan Smart and Oliver Munich, and uh, Gonder and Fischner are the leaders in the... the uh, the um, NTT Masters by just 33 seconds. Uriah Posthumus uh, uh, taking it to them. That'll be a, a very, very tight race. I think they may have won the stage today, but uh, that remains to be seen. We've got a highlights package later on today, and you'll be able to catch up with all that and plenty more drama from the Absa Cape Epic uh, later on. And, of course, uh, our live uh, coverage continues. And uh, don't forget to download the uh, Epic Series app to keep up to date with all the uh, details around the Absa Cape Epic Base. And Miller have a seven minute and four second lead over Bonte Kooning and uh, De Toy. Ben De Toy, the uh, former champions, a lot defending champions in this category, some 14 minutes back for Imbuco Tight Depth. That's the all African jersey 
the Namibian and the South African le leading that. So that's how it all unfolds in the shadow of the Overberg Mountains on the, the Walker Bay coastline here in Hermanus. We've got another day tomorrow here, an out and back loop of 116 kilometers, 1850 meters of climbing. They don't uh, get easy here at uh, the Apsa Cape Epic, but we've got new leaders in both the men's and women's elite races after a dramatic day. On behalf of our entire commentary team, Neil Gardner, Annika Langfell will join you tomorrow morning. Don't go too far away. You'll miss the drama. See you then.